Okay, dear chess friends, welcome to the live commentary of the ninth round of European Women's Chess Championship 2022. Uh, the tournament is uh, going uh, to the finish and uh, we have a very interesting duels uh, today. You can see the pairings on your screen. The first board, uh, we will see Ulvia Fatalieva from Azerbaijan playing against Monika Sochko from Poland. And Monika Sochko has one point lead uh, ahead uh, Ulvia Fatalieva. So this is a very crucial game for Monika because she is black and she would like to survive this game, of course. And on the second board also from Azerbaijan, Gunai Mamadzada playing against Maria Gevorgian, a big surprise of the tournament. Uh, she is uh, seeded uh, 63rd, but uh, now she is playing on the second board and she has six and a half out of eight games, which is uh, a great result. But she is also black today. And I think uh, these young Azerbaijani players they would like to win today and it would change the tournament completely. Uh, we still have three rounds to go. This is not the last round because we play 11 rounds. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is one of the crucial rounds, I think, for, for the outcome of the whole tournament. And on the third board, Levit um, Mrtkian from Armenia, uh, playing against Yelena Danielian from Armenia. So that's a derby, that's a duel between two Armenian players. And uh, Yelena Danielian as a reigning champion. She won the last uh, European Championship. Uh, of course, uh, she, would like to, uh, she would like to attack uh, the first, uh, first places also, also this year. I will check these three games and also, of course, the games of the Czech players, but uh, to see them we need to go a little bit lower because the, the best Czech player is uh, playing on board 26. It's Teresa Rochtein playing against uh, Victoria Radjeva. And we, we will also see the games of Natalie Kanyakova and the Czech duel between Anička Lhotská and Julia Movsesian on board 33. So, Let's have a look at the games because we have 15 minutes uh, delay due to anti-cheating reasons. So for us, the games just started, so we should see the first moves. And we see them, that's great. And we have the game between Ulvia Fatalieva against Monika Sochko. Uh, it's a very calm opening. Well, an interesting choice from a young Azerbaijani player. Uh, it was a knight f6, bishop g5 line, the Trompovsky attack. But it transposed pretty quickly to the queen's gambit declined, which was an interesting transposition. Well, this position I actually play for black, so I know a little bit about this. Uh, but we will see what, what will happen next. Uh, there are plenty of uh, possibilities after bishop g5 a few years ago or for a long time uh, the main line was knight e4 uh, but uh, then actually they they started uh, they started to play other lines because now white usually goes some plan with f3 and it's actually quite playable uh, so then they started playing other lines and d4 is considered to be the main line today. At least I think so. Um, and they usually take on f6, but then black can take either with the g-pawn or with the e-pawn and the position is quite normal. So white played e3 instead. And now I think the main line is to, to go c5 and to avoid the transposition to the queen's gambit declined. And now again, White can take on f6 uh, with, uh, with an unclear position, but white is not supposed to have an advantage here. The simple line goes like bishop takes. Now, even e takes is okay, and something like that can happen. And now they usually choose the plan to go e4 in this position, trying to play somehow in the center. 
maybe knight f3 first and then it's around equal i think okay in the game black chose e6 which is a normal line and then white developed the knight and again i think c5 would be the most uh, objective approach let's say it should be a good move and I'm a little bit surprised that Black didn't play c5 and instead she went for knight bd7 line which is a little bit passive and of course white used that and she played c4 and we are back in in normal lines of the queen's gambit declined uh, which are considered to be slightly better for or white usually so I'm surprised that black didn't play this c5 line I would uh, play it immediately it would be a different game but I think objectively it should be uh, it should be the best choice okay let's check the second board and then we have a slav defense and the queen b3 line which is uh, fashionable these days. Uh, the idea is, of course, to protect the c4 pawn. And black needs to decide whether, whether to take on c4 or to play e6 normally, transposing again to the queen's can be declined somehow. Uh, e6 is on the board now. Uh, I've actually commented on, on one game uh, during this tournament where black played uh, queen b6, I think, which I do not like. And there are also other choices. The idea of queen b3 is to attack the b7 pawn, so you protect uh, the possibility of bishop f5, because this is not, not possible at all. Of course, black can take on c4, using the fact that black, black needs to uh, white needs to take with the queen and then you can develop the bishop. Yeah, it was this uh, it was this opening that was played in that game. And then probably g3. And the game is around equal, I think. In the game e6 happened, which is also quite normal. And now I'm expecting bishop g5, also another queen's can be declined with a normal situation. And the third board. Okay, this I do, do like. It's a... Uh, uh, it's a Karokan, but uh, the pen of, pen of variation uh, leading to a uh, queen's isolated pawn structure, which uh, is my favorite. So, yeah, I will, uh, I will check this game very closely. I'm curious what Jelena Danielian will play. Because the main line here is to go knight c6, of course. And then they usually go bishop g5 or knight f3. And there, then there is this bishop g4 line, which is uh, a little bit crazy. And they do this nowadays uh, very often, that uh, they go into this variation with g takes f3. And there is a lot of theory. And it can actually happen. I'm expecting white to be prepared. And maybe for this reason, black can play something more. Uh, more re reliable, let's say, just g6 or or maybe even e6, which is a little bit passive, but it's playable. So yeah, I'm curious what Elena Danielian will, will play in this in this position. And what about check girls? Okay, we need to go down a little bit. And Teresa Rochstein, she is actually playing a very good tournament. And what is this? Oh my. I played this when I was very young. Uh, this is actually a variation. And I do remember that I played this against Fabiano Caruana with white. And I also played this queen g4 line. But uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened uh, next. But I think knight f6 is OK. And yeah. What happens if white takes? Black will go rook g8. And there is this tactical motive. Uh, bishop takes f2, which is quite funny. Uh, and it would be bad for white. 
But apparently it's also still playable. I mean, I can go in the spirit of King's Gambit, King E2, but uh, yeah, maybe I can play this in a Blitz game, but it's not suitable for, for this situation, I think. So I'm not expecting. Queen takes G7, the bishop takes F2 motif is a big problem, so I guess Queen G3 will happen. And this is actually not stupid because this variation of uh, bishop c5 and bishop a7 is considered to be slightly risky. And I think queen g4 is correct. Uh, of course, black can play something else. Black can play bishop e7 now. And then also queen g4 is a line. And yeah, that, that was what I what I played with Fabiano. Yeah, this, this line, it's a little bit worse for black. Then white can return with the queen here, and these strange maneuvers with bishop and the g6 move is not something black would would want. So uh, this should be better for white. Of course, in in that game with Fabiano, it didn't work out quite well, but it was a long time ago, something like fifteen years maybe. And at that time, uh, at that time, actually, okay, he was very young, and uh, this line was fashionable. Uh, at that time, uh, it's not no longer fashionable anymore. Black, black stopped playing all this, all this uh, a six e six line, and actually, white usually goes for c four these days, uh, transposing the game into some kind of uh, hedgehog uh, structure. But uh, we can see that Teresa is thinking, which is not a good sign. And I am a little bit worried that she may even overlook this possibility. Um, <laughs> that would be uh, that would be a bad bad situation. But okay, we will see. Maybe, but. Yeah, it's a strange thing because she played queen g4 in one minute and then after knight f6, which is the only move now, she started thinking, which is a little bit surprising. But ho hopefully she knows what, he is, what she is doing. And also we should check other games. Natalka Kanyakova. Yeah, I left the commentary yesterday because I was very hungry. And uh, uh, we left the commentary in the situation where uh, Natalka, uh, well, she had completely normal position and I declared the game to, to be a draw. But sadly, somehow she lost yesterday. I don't know how is that possible. So it's a, it's a big blow for her, uh, a very sad game because she was... Uh, she, she was winning actually, and the game was uh, very good for her. But but she lost, so I uh, I think today it will be very difficult for her, especially when the pairings uh, is like this because she is playing against an international master, a very strong uh, Spanish player. So yeah, it's not something one would want and they are playing the French defense. Oh, I like this. I can understand this position. And actually, I played this line when I was very, very young. But today I know that bishop d7 is not precise, exactly because of d takes c5, and I think it was a preparation of white. We can see that from the time management of both players. Uh, but black is actually playing also very quickly. And that's a surprise for me because this bishop d7 is actually not good. Uh, you are supposed to take in this position and go into this gambit line and only play bishop d7 then. And you want to take, of course, there's plenty of theory. Uh, knight takes d4 and then the fashionable line is knight bd2. Also, these days, uh, white quite often, uh, white just castles and then after bishop d7, they are playing rook e1, which is the line of uh, Gavin Jones. So uh, all this stuff is uh, quite complicated. You need to know what you are doing, of course. But anyway, it's a must. You need to you need to do that because in the case of bishop d7, 
that's that's the problem that d takes c5 is good and then white is allowed to castle and this position is considered to be better for white the problem is that usually in this kind of positions you have d takes c3 knight takes c3 and black is a pawn up and here uh, it's the same but but you are not a pawn up so it's a bad situation and now white continues normally with queen e2 and uh, she has a better position the the biggest problem here is that for example now if you play f6 which is a normal plan um, the position <coughs> is better for white i can go something like bishop f4 now or even b5 and uh, you uh, uh, you have this knight on g8 which is a big problem and well, the position is just better for white. The problem is that after f takes e5, knight takes e5, you have this bishop on d7, which is attacked, and that's a big issue, because now knight f6 goes into knight takes d7, and uh, white is winning. So all of this is a big, big issue, and I realized uh, a long time ago that bishop d7 here is not precise, and it's actually a mistake. So I'm... Uh, surprised that uh, Natalka played this very quickly and I have some message in chat I just watched an easy system to make French players squirm <laughs> I don't know what squirm does does mean but uh, I think it's like uh, make them suffer right uh, the mistake bishop d7 was mentioned as common and that's true it's the same kind of mistake uh, like in the a3 line where after bishop d7 or, or something something else, I don't know, then after b4 you are not supposed to take on b4, you are supposed to take on d4. But uh, uh, these things you just, you catch up after uh, 100 losses in French defense, then, then, then you sort of catch up and uh, yeah, you, you can understand that. So this is not good. And black is thinking for a long time. I'm not surprised by that because the normal plan f6 is connected with a big risk. And uh, that's that's a problem, yeah. Yeah, thank you, dictator, for the explanation. Otherwise, the problem uh, is that f6 is very risky and knight g7 is not possible at all because of b4 yeah. so these pieces bishop c5 and queen b6 they are very stupid here and yeah, yeah. I, I played uh, a5 in some games uh, when I was very young and we didn't have strong computers then I even remember uh, the days with uh, informator so we took uh, big books to the tournament. It was, uh, it was not that funny without a car. Um, it was completely different, but now with computers, it's quite easy to understand that this position is bad. Maybe the, the A5 move is uh, the, the lesser evil, let's say, because at least you block this B4 move and then after Queen E2, then you can play this knight g7 but anyway this position is just bad so let's move to the another czech duel anička hocka is playing against julia mofsesian <laughs> and uh, this reminds me some games in in under 10 category i something like 10 years ago i was doing it i was a trainer at these championships and I was analyzing games usually for four girls under 10 and maybe even Anička Hotska, maybe she was there, I don't know and uh, yeah, they, they were playing constantly the same, you know, e4, e5, knight c3, knight f3, knight, knight c6, knight f6 and bishop c4, bishop c5 and they, they all started to play a6, h3, h6 and a3 and I, I tried for many times to, to explain that Okay, girls, you, you are not supposed to be afraid of these pins, you know, 
and when uh, when they play bishop g5 or bishop g4 it's manageable you can play h6 then and g5 and and uh, uh, yeah sometimes it worked uh, sometimes i convinced them that these moves are not necessary but sadly for me if the championship is uh, is held today uh, i would have a big problems with that because all top players from the top 10 they are playing these moves in italian all the time we see h6 a6 and uh, it's fashionable today again after all this time i'm surprised uh, by that uh, but yeah they are playing it today quite often uh, as a prophylactic move and uh, yeah I don't understand it too much. Um, so what do we have? It's a very calm opening. I would expect uh, <laughs> h6 here. But I think Julia wants to... Uh, okay, she wants to win after a bad start of the tournament. Of course, she, she wants to get back to the, to the top boards. And uh, she wants to win, so... She tried something to, to change the pawn structure because if white takes, then at least we have the open f file. And again, in my youth, when I was young, this was considered to be good for black. You know, you were not supposed to take on e6. But also, this changed recently. And I think this pawn structure is no longer considered to be good for black. It's unclear but usually white goes c3 and d4 next and actually this pawn structure is not considered to be good for black because this attack is not going anywhere and the counterplay in the center of white is considered to be slightly better uh, the computer confirms but the advantage is very small also knight d5 is possible here with an unclear unclear game but then it's some sort of a pawn sacrifice because black can play something like this. But then the move bishop g5 is possible with a normal game. Or even I can sacrifice this pawn playing something like d4 in this position. Again, with a normal game. So, okay, we will see what happens. We have some quiet games and some games that uh, already got complicated and we look back at the first board because we have many moves there oh my what is that we are still in the preparation of a young azerbaijani player ulvia fatalieva and this is some sort of a variation i think This reminds me an old games of Alechheim versus Capablanca or the other way around. They were playing this kind of knight d5, trying to exchange some pieces. Uh, but I'm not an expert here. Uh, queen takes e7. Then I do believe that we had some games with the castle and b6 move, something like that. In the, in the game, maybe knight takes c3 first and then b6. In the game, uh, Topalov uh, against uh, Anand, the, the world championship match. Uh, but I'm not sure, so I'm sorry. But it was this pawn structure, but I'm not sure about the move order. And uh, somehow black able to get the bishop here sacrifice one pawn on c5 and then then uh, he won a very famous game against uh, Topalov it was uh, in their world championship match uh, when Topalov was afraid to go in the rapid playoff and he lost with white instead White went into a different pawn structure by playing e4, which looks very aggressive to my eye. Um, well, 
Of course, knight takes c3 is going to happen, and white has some space advantage here. But on the other hand, we already exchanged two pairs of light, light pieces, so I think black is going to be fine here. I have many options, starting with b5 and then c5, or I can go normally e5, but I don't like this that much. Um, So, yeah, I don't think this e4 move is that dangerous, but she played it very quickly and most probably it's still her preparation. But I'm a little bit surprised by this move e4. It's aggressive, but I think, well, well castling first makes more sense, I think, because black is going to take on c3 anyway. So, yeah. This variation d takes c4, I know this is possible. It's a very reliable variation, but it's passive and white has a small edge. So I don't fully understand why she didn't play uh, castle normally, but okay, e4 is also possible, why not? So I wonder what her preparation is after knight takes c3. b takes c3, or maybe even she can take with the rook and create some counterplay like that. But somehow I don't believe in this e4 move. I don't know, I don't know. I would like to castle first. And here we have another interesting queen's gambit situation. After bishop g5, which I suggested, black reacted very aggressively by h6 and g5. Oh my, what is that? And she was thinking for like 10 minutes on this maneuver. So I do believe that it's not her preparation anymore. And to be honest, it seems a little bit nervous to me. And I know that Maria Gevorgian, she has a six and a half out of eight, which is very good. And she wants to, to hold this position, but uh, sometimes when we have such an important game, we are, we are humans and we are sometimes nervous and uh, playing too aggressively, trying to hide, uh, to hide this emotion. And uh, I think it's exactly the case here because I do not think this is going to work. I mean, it's playable, but I believe white's position now is already better and she can play bishop d3 normally or even long castle now. And if you take on g3, then h takes, and we have the, this kind of positions when white already took on d5. This is some sort of a normal variation, a relatively normal variation. After c takes d5, e takes d5, but also it's normal with the bishop on f8. Now this position is actually quite normal. The queen is already on b3, it's misplaced, and black can play this. But this is completely different. Why didn't take on d5 yet? And also there is this bishop on e7, which is supposed to be on g7. So uh, I'm not saying it's lost, of course not, but I'm not surprised that computer shows like plus 0 0.8 advantage to white. The opening is bad, objectively. So yeah, I, I don't believe that this is going to work. And I would play this bishop d3 normally, but also long castle is a possibility here. Because when you see these pieces, they are not placed very well. So that's a problem for black. So I can play aggressively. I don't know what black is going to do. The computer suggests this maneuver, which is a little bit stupid, right? 
but maybe playable. Maybe that's a clever, clever idea to um, to develop the king. Interesting. On the other hand, it's difficult for white to to break through black's defenses. For example, if I play e4, which looks logical now, I do believe. You just take on c4, and after bishop takes, uh, you can start playing on the queen side. And suddenly, suddenly it looks relatively okay for black. I would like to play f4 here, which is not possible. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's not that bad. Maybe it's playable just to take. And maybe it's better to play bishop d3 first, because now if you go king f8, uh, I can, but yeah, this is, maybe this is normal. Maybe this is black side, yeah. And then to take and play b5. It looks very ugly to my eyes, but maybe it's playable. Well, interesting game. Somehow I don't like black's decision, but maybe maybe it's playable. I can take, of course, but then it transposes to, to the normal variation. And then black can just take again, and after h takes, there is this king f8 maneuver. So, yeah. Maybe then I make short castle and rook ae1, trying to push e4. This looks maybe a little bit better for white. So let's have a look at this pen off. Oh, and what I told you, exactly that happened. Bishop g4, line, queen b3, bishop takes e6, that's the main line. Queen takes b7 and knight takes d4. It looks like a chaos, but actually this is the main line nowadays. And what I do like is that uh, they are playing the main line, but... Um, I can tell you that this is a small little trick possible uh, possible to uh, to play from white side black can go knight d6 and if he thinks that he is winning a piece that's a good sign for us because we take and then we castle short uh, gaining a very nice compensation for the sacrificed piece and this line is actually considered to be a draw. So that's one possible line. Also, queen takes b5 is normal. It's an old line. Uh, and white... Uh, usually, uh, usually white exchanges on d5 then, which actually happened in the game. Queen takes d5, and now the old main line is to take on d5, and that happened in the game. And after e takes d5, you can you can play bishop e3, I think. And it's actually a little bit better for white, but black has uh, good defensive resources. I actually played that recently in a simul against a relatively strong player and I was held to a draw without any problems for black which was a little bit annoying and I think he played yeah we have bishop e3 on the board already and I think he played king e6 but I'm not sure I like this position actually for white because this pawn is weak and the king is in the center but uh, Although it looks suspicious, it can also be quite good. So I think King e6 happened in, in that simultaneous exhibition. And I think I played Long Castle, Rook c8 check, 
and bishop c5 yeah, yeah yeah that's exactly what he played and it's actually the best line according to the computer and maybe a correct way to to create an equal position for black yeah we have we have theory everywhere these days yeah and i played rook h e1 in that game which is also correct i'm quite happy about that but yeah he took which is also correct. And after king d6, I think I misplayed that because, yeah, I played something like a3, which is really stupid, and then we may made a draw. Uh, but rook a3 is the correct move. And now white still has some pressure against weak black pawns in this position. And there is some way to a draw, but uh, it's uh, not easy to play in a, in a human game. So I'm expecting king e6 here, it's theory, but uh, if Jelena Danielian wants to win, this is not the variation for, for winning the game. We have king e6 on the board and it's still theory for them, because Jelena played it very fast. Mm. So I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if white wanted something more than a draw maybe it would be better to play some something else in the opening but maybe she just wants to put a little a little pressure on her opponent and if it's a draw then if it's a draw so i'm expecting long castle here and then yeah then most probably we will see a draw here on the third board uh, i'm a little bit said that uh, uh, we didn't see any any chaos in this game because they they knew they knew the theory of this pen of pen of line and i do remember that uh, mark dvoretsky analyzed this position in a in a big detail in one of his books i i know it's outdated already but actually uh, these guys were very strong and usually computer confirms their analysis and it ended with some evaluation like black needs to be precise but it's a draw and we see a long castle on the board already played so as i told you this is a, this is a pretty common line i think even in a simul i I played against preferred opponent and also I think bishop b4 is the line here and maybe it can be objectively a little bit stronger because then you go to c8 with the other rook and it can be quite important because the rook on a8 is protecting the a7 pawn so I think this bishop b4 is a little bit stronger than uh, rook c8 and bishop c5 that I played before because now rook h e1 is actually quite annoying because then if he takes you just play rook a3 there and the best move according to the computer is king d6 which is already a little bit suspicious for a human but after bishop f4 you can still play king c6 with a normal position uh, this is too slow pinning the bishop is too slow then you can continue normally with i don't know king b5 or king b7 uh, and black is relatively fine here so we have a fine position for for black but no winning chances here so i think it's gonna be a draw and we move to the czech girls because the tournament is played in Prague and we have 14 Czech girls here and Teresa, after 9 minutes of thinking she realized the danger, which is good and she played Queen G3 so that's okay and after D6, uh, short castle Knight C6 and Knight C3 well, that's a little bit surprising because C4 would be my choice First and then knight c3 but okay knight c3 is also possible well she spent a lot of time over these moves 
I don't know what she was calculating because taking on g7 now it's still very risky and I think nobody would do that in this position. Black has a very nice compensation and no, I don't believe this is playable. So knight c3 and then we have this position on the board. I'm expecting short castle now. Also b5 is possible, I think. So another logical move. If we play short castle, then bishop h6 is not that dangerous because black, uh, black can play knight h5 and after queen g4, even, even knight e5 is possible and then g takes h6 opening up to g file again and white lost the dark squared bishop this is a risky variation of course but possible and of course black can play even computer shows that black has even small advantage i don't know but of course knight e8 is also possible with a completely normal position so bishop h6 is possible but it doesn't lead anywhere and then black goes king h8 hiding with the king and having a normal position so it's around equal now i think instead of short castle maybe black white can play something like knight c3 and bishop d2 it was the way how we played this line is 15 years ago i would do that and today I would really consider playing c4 uh, going into the Marozzi structure. So, yeah, but normal game, nothing really special. We already have one draw. A young, another Azerbaijani player. They played some theoretical line in, uh, in this Botvinnik system, which I also played a long time ago. But I don't know the theory too well because there are many changes of the theory. But this line of taking on f6 was supposed to be bad for black. I don't know if that changed or 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 anything. But yeah, they just they just played the theory. Both of them were prepared, and then they made a draw. Honestly, I don't know what's the uh, was the meaning of such game. Maybe white wanted to test it, the preparation of black. I don't know. Maybe she was satisfied with the draw. <laughs> but I'm also surprised that they, they made a draw here because now black has the only move, as at least the computer says that. And after knight f4, it's not clear to me how black is going to react because the c4 pawn is hanging. But apparently this move leads to a draw. So let's see. Then rook d2, king h3, rook takes b2. Again. Knight d3. Rook somewhere. Maybe even a2. Rook e2, rook d2, maybe. Knight takes. Oh, rook c2. What is that? Oh my. Takes, takes. But this is suspicious, no? White is going to be very good here. I don't know. It, it is just strange. I don't know why they made it wrong. It was still white's preparation. I mean, white spent like minus five minutes with these increments, 30 seconds per each move, she she got to 135, she started with 130. And by playing rook c1, she offered a draw? What is that? And really according to the computer here, which is 24, but it has very nice depth, 23. Rook e8 is just the only move. And then somehow it's a draw, but maybe I, I was not precise in that variation and white got the upper hand. I don't know. I don't understand. Or maybe they are playing, but the result is wrong. It's also possible. 
Okay, so let's go to the Czech games. Uh, we were here with uh, Teresa Rochstein, and then I wanted to check the game of Natalka. After 18 minutes of thinking, she realized that the queen is blocking the bishop and she played queen c7. Yeah, that I also did a long time ago. The problem is that the bishop is going to be bad also on d6. And exactly after knight a3, the knight is going to d6, that is knight b5 threat. So you have to play a6, but the position is very passive now. And white can play rook b1 and then change the strategy and play c4, gaining a very nice position. Then I jump with the knight and yeah. Uh, but maybe it was a good reaction. It could have been worse, you know. She could have played something like knight g7 and uh, losing the bishop after b4. It could have been worse. The queen c7 is one of the uh, normal reactions. a5 is a little bit better objectively, but queen c7 is okay. She was trying to lure white into this b4 line. It's also possible to play knight bd2 and then knight b3 here with, with an advantage. Okay, but rook b1 happened. I think white knows her stuff and white is much better. c4 is coming. The position of black is falling apart, I think. It will be very difficult for for black now. Okay, and the check duel after bishop e6, we saw a short castle, which is a surprise. I I didn't expect this one, but it's also playable. On the other hand, I would rather I would rather choose between knight d5 and bishop takes e6. This is a surprise for me, because the pawn structure after this exchange is a little bit broken. On the other hand, this queen d3 is normal, and I played this variation with white when I was very young. But I started with bishop c4, and then I would like to have the, the knight on e2. But it's not such a big difference, right? So this is possible. On the other hand, now I don't think queen d3 is something we want, but maybe it's not. it's not any difference. This can happen, then a5 and then c6, of course, trying to push d5 in, but the position is quite normal. So, yeah, maybe it's going to be interesting after all. Uh, this short castle letting black to take on c4 is actually an interesting idea. And we have something in chat. Thank you, Ivan, for the comment. And you want to check this game on board 11 between Tiana Blagojevic and Irina Bulmaga. Where is Irina? I, I, I think something went wrong in the tournament because I didn't see any of her games. She's a very strong player. This position is around equal. I actually played this for white. Um, it's some sort of this Sicilian with bishop b5. And then I can understand that they usually play h3 here. And it's a preparation for d4. When you play it immediately, they can play d5 and jump to e4. But still, this is quite normal. Like many moves are playable here. This is one of them. The, the important point for black here is not to play e6. This would lead to a terrible position for black. Instead, it's correct to go bishop e6, which black knew, and that's good for her. She played bishop e6, and probably she knows her stuff. Uh, it's important not to play e6 in this pawn structure. Knight bd2 and rook a c8, and the position is around equal, I think. Of course, it was possible to play knight g5 here, and it would be my choice, because this is the strongest piece and you need to, to 
to destroy it. Also, you are threatening to take maybe on e6, maybe it's not a threat. So I think rook a c8 is possible. Black can also take on g5 with a normal position after rook a c8. It's a tough call, right? But maybe I can take here and then play f3, I don't know, maybe. Maybe something like that, but it's not such a big issue. The position is around equal, I think. Also, I can take on e4 with the same evaluation and then, and then I guess knight c3. Rook fd8 and yeah, then something with the queen somewhere, yeah, with a normal position. Uh, I think this is around equal, Ivan. Uh, maybe we will check this game later on. Well, for example, if rook c1 here, which looks logical, I think white will have some problems on the queen side, let's say after queen b5. So it can easily be a little bit more pleasant for black because she played it very strongly with bishop e6. So it's a little bit unpleasant surprise for white, I think now, but it's a normal game. And let's go back what happened in those games. Oh my, oh my, what is that? No, I don't like knight b6. Oh my. <laughs> maybe she wanted to, maybe she wanted to, I don't know, confuse her opponent and uh, just uh, step out of her preparation because it's, truth to be told, it's almost sure that this move is not the first line of the computer, right? So, there is a high probability that uh, your opponent is not prepared for it because 9b6 is not something uh, that one would analyze. Uh, just to understand, I mean, black is a little bit passive, so he needs to exchange pieces. And when you can exchange such a beautiful knight on c3, you don't do it and you go knight b6 instead. It's uh, objectively not good, of course. But it's a normal game and white is out of the preparation, so that's an advantage. Black wanted to push e5 in, which she did, so it's of course not that stupid. But the position is passive and the knight on b6 is bad, so... Um, well, I go, I don't know, h3 or something like that. And white is a little bit better. You know, so play against the knight by playing b3. I've seen a lot of these knights when I play Grunfeld. Uh, very often they just stay there for the rest of the game. It's a problem. It's a problematic piece, let's say. So, yeah, I don't like this decision by Monika Sochko. But on the other hand, yeah, they are out of the theory and maybe it was wise. I don't know. What was the plan? Please don't ask me like black's position when you look at these pieces on c8 and d7 yeah it makes me sad i don't know you probably need to go something like knight f8 in the future you need to be careful because this pawn is hanging so yeah and here white thought for 22 minutes and I think maybe that's a common strategy against these Azerbaijani girls to play something out of the book. <laughs> maybe they realized it's necessary and maybe it will work, I don't know. But here again, the same as Monika Sochko's strategy, uh, black played h6 and g5 and knight h5 just to get white out of the book and uh, Bishop e2 is not the move I like. I think the bishop does not belong to e2. Usually we need to play something like e4 in the future to, to destroy black's defenses and bishop e2 doesn't help that. So I think d3 is much more natural square for the bishop. The advantage of bishop e2 is that it practically forces black to take on g3. 
because of this possible attack. So this is the advantage, but I think black can continue normally by playing king f8 and the same line I told you about. And now I think bishop e2 is not the square for the bishop. On the other hand, it may be not such a big difference because after d takes c4, I will take anyway with the bishop. So, so it may be not such a big issue. But on the other hand, uh, this, these 22 minutes, it is a lot. White thought for 22 minutes and the time may be missed in the time table. Time is valuable in a chess game and spending 22 minutes on this position, I don't know. Maybe she was considering long castle and she didn't know whether, whether she wants to castle long and that's the reason behind the long thing. But I don't like this bishop e2 move. And the third board, oh my dear, these girls are strong. Bishop b4 was played immediately. Yeah. As I told you, yeah, they are, they are, they are on my level. You know, I exactly know what's going to happen in, in these games. Um, I have a suspicion that Bishop b4 was the analysis of Mark Voretsky in this position. And exactly after a3, then you go look hc8 check, and then you go bishop c5. So you provoked a3, which is good for black because white is no longer able, and rook e1 happened, rook takes e3, white is no longer able to go to a3. And on the top of that, you solve the problem of this h8 rook and it can be useful that you still protect the a7 pawn. And it's still a theory for both players. And I think, I don't know, but it seems to me like they are not playing against each other and they want it every day. Uh, it's a variation even I know without the preparation and around equal and when black knows what he is doing then it's just a draw and exactly what's happening on the board because black is playing very fast and they got into this this position and rook e8 happened instantly so yeah black knows what he she is doing maybe it's some sort of a preparation for armenian team and this is just a draw right don't see. Maybe white has some edge, a very slight one, but I'm expecting a draw by move repetition very soon because it seems to me like this position is uh, around equal. On the other hand, don't be fooled by the computer evaluation because the computer says 0, 0, 0 all the time. And when you don't play this bishop b4 move and you play rook c8 first, you can easily get into a very problematic position in, in which the computer will say like 0 0.1, so it's equal any, anyway. But for a human, it would be different. So you can easily get into bad position here. But when you know the stuff, I mean, you reach the position like in the game and then I'm expecting uh, draw a repetition very soon, something like rook c1 now, king b6, and then I don't know, something with the rook, rook c8 maybe, yeah, but then this, and then I maybe exchange but maybe, yeah, this is going to be better for black, right? <laughs> when I do this, you go king c6 and it's already better for black. But only a little bit. I can save this one pretty easily. Well, it's a draw. It will, it will end something like in some position like this with a draw. Uh, and even white played rook g1 very fast. So, yeah, I think they studied this at home and it's just a draw
uh, maybe it's a part of the repertoire for both of them and expecting a quick quick draw here <coughs> here actually my computer shows that black has the advantage I don't know some sort of a mistake I think but actually it would be more logical to play rook c1 first right it actually seems that white mixed something up. <laughs> she, she may confused her own preparation. Because if you want to play rook g1, you do it now. Maybe she forgot to include rook c1 check. <laughs> because now after rook g1, black can play rook b8. And I'm not saying it's winning. But for example, after rook takes g7, when you do this, I go like this. And there is a mate, guys. I I do enjoy these kind of positions. <laughs> but sadly for us, G6 happened in one minute and we are back into the drawing zone again. Yeah, I think she she mixed <laughs> she mixed the preparation. Oh my. That's a little bit embarrassing for for both players, but okay. Uh, it happens. They are both from Armenia. It would be a draw anyway. But uh, this was actually possible. I'm not saying it lost. No, no, no. no. White would go to C1 anyway. But it's already slightly unpleasant for White because these matings attacks, they are there. And it's not easy anymore. They are con continuing very quickly. I don't understand that. Yeah, somehow she mixed her preparation, but then... But I don't know why. <laughs> why they are playing this? Come on, come on, girls. You are already at move 31, so just agree to a draw, right? I do not believe you that you are playing this normally. No, no. Uh, but actually, this in-game is interesting, and it can be easily misplayed by both players, by black and also by white. I know computer shows 0, 0, 0, and it's around equal, but it's very, it's playable for both sides. So even when you when you want to try this variation, this pen of variation, even if black rep replies correctly with bishop b4, then you can play this with white if you are a fan of rook in games. Uh, it's actually playable for both colors. But yeah, this this is some sort of a strange game and it will finish in a, uh, in a draw pretty soon. And let's go, let's go uh, to check the our girls. What Teresa is doing. What do we have there? 95, okay. And bishop e2, that is correct. I actually don't like this knight e5 move because I think the knight is going to be attacked there in the future. And I don't know what's the benefit of knight e5. I, I don't get it. I'm going to play king h1 then. Mm, I don't like this knight e5 move. What's the reason? Why, why do we play that? I don't know. But it's not such a big mistake, right? <coughs> and then... <coughs> And then our girls slightly below. Yeah, sadly, Natalka is the victim of uh, the preparation because White knew the plan C4. And in this very difficult situation where, according to the computer, the best move is Bishop A7, which is quite, uh, quite ugly. Uh, in this situation, Black fell into the trap. She played knight takes e5, but after now knight takes e5, knight takes e5, we will see c5 on the board. And that's a big problem. Maybe Black was hoping to get a knight takes d3 in because just to explain after bishop a7, bishop f4, f6, uh, there is almost everything winning. I think queen h5 may be the best move. 
Yeah, this is very ugly. G6, and then bishop takes G6, winning everything. So, yeah, this is very ugly. We see C5 on the board, and I think Natalka has the idea of taking on D3, which after queen takes D3 is actually playable, of course, because then black would go to A7, but C takes B6 is the problem. And now there is no chance for black. After queen c3, rook e3, you are losing a piece. And even I can see that. So that's a bad sign. Uh, if I can see that, then I think uh, Marta Garcia Martin will play this and as an international master, she will win the game. I see, I see no future for black's position. We are down material and position also. Yeah, so please, please don't do this at home and after bishop d3 take on d4. But you need to learn this variation with short castle, you need to learn c takes d4, but when you play French you need to learn something, you can't play this without a theory. And after bishop d7, it's already better for white. And the thing is that white really knew her stuff. I mean, she was prepared perfectly. And this plan of rook b1 and c4 is very important in this kind of position. And it's much better for white already. And it's not a surprise that in some, in this bad position, black made a tactical mistake. I don't know what she missed. Or maybe she wants to go knight takes f2 here. No, it, it reminds me some sort of a blitz game. I don't know. But it's still lost even if I take this and take this. Even if I play such a stupid line, it's still winning for, for white. Because I can cover this pawn. And after f6. Okay, when you win this pawn, then it's already three pawns and it's playable. But you, I, I think you don't win this pawn. Or I can play bishop g3 and then take on b5 and then you have only two pawns and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lost position. But also I can do more aggressively by playing b5. I think. I don't know. And when you go e5... I can maybe even play b6 here in this position, but it's completely unnecessary, but just to show this one is also winning uh, by, by a huge margin because you don't have any moves here. I, mean, I transformed my advantage, but I think in the game she would play bishop g3, winning this in-game. It will take some time, but uh, it's very hard to spoil such an advantage. So. It's a little bit sad story for Natalka. Uh, it could have been a very nice tournament because she was winning yesterday, but now it looks like two zeros in a row. And the next, oh, we see, we see the draw. So, yeah, they made a repetition finally by playing rook c1, king b6, rook f1, and king c6. So the only funny moment in this game is that white uh, forgot her preparation and she forgot to include rook c1. <laughs> so after rook g1, there was a possibility of playing rook b8, which could have been uh, an nasty surprise for white. <laughs> but it didn't happen when they made a draw, okay? Um, so, so we will check the game between Anička and Julia. And in this very interesting strategical position, I was taught a long time ago that I don't want to go ninety five. And exactly that happened. I, if I remember it correctly, it was exactly why uh, the the exact reason that you demonstrated on the board that she took on d five, and in this structure actually the bishop on c5 is good and we have a good sort of, I don't know, King's Indian structure 
But on the other hand, it's also not a disaster for white and the bishop can be exchanged in sort of equal position, I think. So knight e5 is actually not that bad. Maybe it's correct. Maybe black was supposed to play a5 first. Just uh, blocking the queen's side and after bishop e3, which is probably the logical continuation, only then you, ta you can take on d5, playing knight b4. And yeah, that's, that's something different because now I just move the queen away, right? You take white, uh, white can't take with the queen because of knight takes c2. And that's just a tactical issue. But even if she, she can take with the queen, then the problem is that this e5 is useful for me. And then I block the whole king side. I go with the knight to a6. And then, and then I block the whole king's queen side. I should have a slight strategical advantage as black. But it's not so, something uh, too difficult for white. So I think this a5 move is better just to prepare knight b4. But what Julia did is also quite okay. The problem is that I, I think Julia wanted to win this game and how you are going to win this position with black. If anybody, white is slightly better now. I can imagine this a5 knight b4 to be more active for black, but now I take, I can even take with the pawn anyway. And then how, how you are going to win this position is just a dead draw. I don't see anybody winning this. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a drawish situation. But of course, Anička is a big attacker, and maybe in this strategic position, Julia will be able to outplay her. But I think we are missing pieces. You know, three pairs of light pieces are are gone, and that's a big problem for our winning chances. So I don't see any. Uh, okay, we already have a draw on board number three. Draw on board number six. I think girls are starting to feel the, the, the tension and they are tired after a long tournament. Many of them played the Olympiad in Chennai, which took place like 14 days ago. My wife, she returned, yeah, 14 days ago, which is uh, not enough time for... Uh, re regaining energy and then they traveled to Prague for some of them it's also far away so yeah they are tired already so I can understand these draws and we have still a game on board one and on board two and we will look at them after a short break thank you very much for watching I will be back in 10 minutes see you soon
Okay, welcome back, dear chess friends, uh, to the second part of uh, commentary of the ninth round of European Women Chess Championship here in Prague in Don Giovanni Hotel. Well, you've seen uh, some cameras from the playing hall uh, just uh, during the break, and uh, now you see the position between Ulvia Fatalieva and Monika Sochko. When I uh, saw the camera from this board, I realized uh, how young is uh, the, the white player and actually Monika Sochko looked already a little bit tired, I'm not surprised, uh, because the tournament is long and uh, uh, yeah, the games are tough. On the other hand, uh, we were talking about this night on B6, I don't like it, but on the other hand, Somehow it worked uh, not that bad because after queen c2, e takes d4, knight takes d4, the computer is showing 0, 0, 0. So the position of black is playable, but I think knight, F, knight f8 was, uh, was the correct move. In the game, knight f6 was played, which looks active, but the knight is actually somewhat misplaced on f6. Black can't take on e4, that's, that's not realistic. And it would be more safe to have the knight on f8. Let's, let's see a simple variation. Now, if rook cd1, uh, the same move like, like in the game, black can play calmly bishop e6, and the knight is useful on f8. It can jump to e6, it can jump to g6, protecting the back rank. The queen is a little bit free. This position should be around equal. On the other hand, in the game, now black has problems with the bishop because if bishop e6 now, then this knight is going to be attacked after f4 or first just h3 and then f4. And uh, these pieces are vulnerable on e6 and f6. It's not a big difference, nothing like that. I'm actually surprised that that computer is giving white such a big advantage, like 0 0.8, which is already something. It's not 0, 0, 0, like two moves ago. So I'm surprised by the difference. I think it's completely playable for black. But I can also feel that the knight on f6 is vulnerable and it was better to have it on f8. It's actually quite an instructive moment. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but it's about the, the feeling for the cooperation of the pieces. It's very difficult to explain, but there is a difference. Mm, but I would say that it's not, it's not decisive. Uh, it's not something... Uh, something too concrete and now we have this bishop d7 on the board and you can feel that these pieces are not right compared to the situation after knight f8 and bishop e6 now this is different here when you imagine something like f4 and e5 the knight is anyway going somewhere to d7 after it will be attacked by, by the pawn on e5 so the knight is anyway going to d7 and f8, so it could spare two tempis, I, I think. But it's a very complicated situation, and uh, it's difficult to explain. This move c5 is also interesting, and the bishop is going to c6. And I'm actually surprised by this continuation. Black is playing it actively. I mean, Monika Sochko, she is a very experienced player. And of course, she didn't want to end up in a bad situation after a move like e5, because actually e5 is a direct threat, sort of, because you need to calculate queen takes e5 and then some moves with the bishop, or white can play f4 and then e5. So she didn't want to end up in a passive position, and that's the reason for c5. And I, I actually like this move a lot. It's an active move. And you are saying, okay, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be passive. Uh, I'm not wait for, I will not wait for f4, e5. So I'm going to play c5 and then uh, I'm going uh, to c6 with the bishop to harass this pawn. At least the knight on f6 is useful then. So 
So I'm expecting knight b5 and bishop c6. And then, then I believe Maybe after knight b5, actually, bishop c6 is not that good because a7 is hanging and that's a big problem. But I can take with the queen. Then maybe e5 on the board. Yeah, I can expect this variation, knight fd5, with a very unclear play. Maybe there is a better move after knight db5. Maybe I can give up this bishop, but I don't like it somehow. The bishop was valuable. But maybe this is better than this is better than taking on d8 with the queen. I don't know. Also, the knight can jump to b3. Uh, it's uh, similar like black knight on b6. Also with a small plus to white, I would say. Yeah, Monika Sochko is under pressure, and that's also the reason for the c5 move. Black realizes that this is not going to be easy. Knight b3, we have knight b3 on the board already. Now I'm expecting bishop c6. Uh, with a small plus to white. There is also a move knight a5, which I like very much. I know this pawn is hanging, but I'm going to take with the bishop, I think. Yeah, now I don't like black's position. This knight a5 move looks strong somehow, but to my complete complete shock and amazement, computer is not uh, it's not worried about knight takes c6. I don't understand why. I mean, this looks terrible, right? These pawns, but I mean. The silicon monster says it's around equal. <laughs> okay, uh, but I, I'm I'm expecting this to happen, and uh, black is under pressure, at least to my eyes, which is a bad news for Polish fans. But hopefully, Monica will survive this. It's a very crucial game. Uh, if uh, Ulvia Fatalieva wins, then she gets to seven points. She will be equal with Monica. And the game uh, is crucial for the standings. The tournament would start like from from the beginning, because then in the last two rounds anything can happen. Uh, but now Monika Sochko has uh, a lead, half a point, and even one point to, to the other players. So it's a uh, it's very important situation. We will see how, how this develops. And the second board, which is also crucial for the standings. Uh, then we have this position, and surprisingly for me, queen b6 happened, which I don't like at all. I mean, the queen spent two moves to get to a5, where it is badly placed compared to d8. And white made this queen c2 move, which is useful for white, so this is not good. Of course, long castle and b5, bishop b3, and this is not good at all. I think uh, I think Gunai Mamadzada uh, has uh, great chances for winning this game because when you look at Black's position, there are no pluses. What is the queen doing here? The king is weak. The king side is weak, and it would be okay if. We have some counterplay on the queen side. Let's compare it to the variation we analyzed shortly. For example, this b5, right? If black goes king b6 and then b5, it's sort of similar, but it's not. There are many tempies uh, in black's favor compared to the game. And moreover, the bishop can't go to b3 and it has to go somewhere, I don't know. And then this situation is different comparing to the game that the queen can go here and we have some tempos, we have the king on f8 and uh, then we go a5, gaining counterplay on the queen side, that's very crucial. When we have this on the board, 
it's much better for white. It's surprising how small details can influence the evaluation of the position because now the queen is safe. That's one point. The bishop is safe. And black still has the king here in the center. There is no a5. So I would expect queen b6 to be played. I, I, I expect this to happen. But then there is already bishop takes e6 combination, which is very logical that this is possible because of all these um, inaccuracies from black side, you lose two tempies and then you get bishop takes f6, uh, bishop takes e6 and then queen g6. Also another reason for, for playing king f8 in, uh, in advance. And now, yeah, this is just bad. After king f8, you go knight e4 and I can't imagine black surviving this because a knight fg5 is a threat. And you have no counterplay here. Also h6 is hanging. So yeah, this is just bad. You need to go to d8, but I don't like this, honestly. I can uh, I can play king knight e5, maybe, or knight e4 anyway. There is also a pawn on h6. I know it's a piece, but the compensation is enormous. Uh, I would be happy to play this with white. Uh, you can also take it immediately. And um, maybe that was uh, uh, that was a possibility. Gunai Mamadzara may consider this, and it's almost the same like with the queen on b6, right? Now when you take, I go here, and also maybe it's even better because now I go knight e5, and the c6 pawn is already hanging. So this looks winning, right? Could have been played. The disadvantage for, for, for white is that now after knight e4, the a2 pawn is hanging. So it's a disadvantage. But anyway, I think after queen takes a2, knight f takes g5, there is no defense for black. I mean, there is a mate on f7. And if you give me check, I just go here and then I hide to b1. And what, what's the matter? And then it's just mate. So, yeah, that's a pity. I mean, this was a possibility for Gunai Mamadzada to win the game and to join the leaders with seven points. It's a bit sad that she didn't play bishop takes e6. I lost a very similar game with black. And then I realized that it's very important to to have a good piece coordination. By moving queen to a5 and then playing b5, you are not automatically gaining counterplay. And on the other side, there are weaknesses that uh, that needs to be taken care of. And this bishop takes e6 was, uh, was a good move, yeah. Okay, we have a question in chat. Is Sochko's position okay? Well, hello, uh, Marcin. Greetings to Poland. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. Uh, it's the, the position is worse, but it's playable. I think Monika Sochko is under pressure. We will return to that game. Uh, yeah, and we still do not have any move from, from black. The position is sort of okay, but difficult. So it's not lost, but it's not okay completely. It's somewhere in the middle. Because black knights are doing nothing. Black has this pawn weakness. So I'm expecting bishop e6 or bishop c6. We analyze that a little bit. And we will see. Um, for example, after bishop e6, um, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's a very tough position. That's for sure. That's what I know. For both colors, it's very tough. Objectively, it's better for white due to all these reasons I, I told you. But uh, 
it's difficult. This pawn is weak, and the horses are doing nothing. On the other hand, it's not something decisive yet. Uh, can we check the board number seven? Of course we can. It's a game be between Olga Babi and Stavrula Solakido. And dear John, you are a fan of one of these players, both of them, or the opening? Uh, what was the opening? The Sicilian with bishop b5 and then bishop a4. Well, that's a strange opening. I don't know. I've never seen that in my life. What is that? Come on. This is a strange opening. Hmm. Well, that's an inspiration because usually, <clears throat> usually white is doing short castle here. Black black can play a6 and now we do have some problems with the bishop and bishop a4 is not possible due to b5 so white plays either either bishop d3 or bishop takes d7 which is normal and many games have been played in this line uh, but bishop a4 yeah maybe that's more than line i don't know I just didn't see it at all. Um, actually, Magnus actually Magnus played these lines I, I told you about, and this bishop d3 line also was her favorite. But I'm talking about this move order, you know. I know White wants to get into sort of uh, Rui Lopez structure. Uh, so that's the idea, and he sacrifices a pawn for that because knight takes e4 is possible but after rook e1 white will have a definite compensation i actually played uh, played a line in this uh, in this variation i think i started with d4 here and after c takes d4 knight takes d4 knight f6 i played short castle which is actually possible and again, this knight takes e4 is considered to be even bad now. It's very risky. And uh, this is uh, good for white. So I played this line. Sacrificing the pawn on e4 is actually fashionable these days. But uh, bishop a4 is a novelty for me. But maybe it's playable. Why not? So... The idea also is that after a6, you can play c4 now. So it's a sort of prophylactic move. Of course, you can also play c3 and continue normally. But if you go, if you go c3 or c4 in this position, it's not that good because after c4, uh, of, of course, it's playable, but uh, he is not going to, to play a6 to chase you to a4 because you are stupid on b5 anyway so i can understand this move for them why not i would go knight f6 also and after short castle but the position is completely normal black can go g6 and uh, it's just normal pawn structure but it's a clever move order okay maybe thank you thank you john for bringing my attention to this game it's interesting what's a surprise for me is that uh, white instead of going into this real pass structure after rook e1 and then c3 that white played this d3 move maybe her plan was to go c4 anyway and uh, to play this kind of structure uh, which is also quite normal but i don't think black has any problems here because you see this is not ideal, right? You have to hold on d4. And promoting d4 actually 
is kind of difficult in this position because, for example, you can play d4, but you lost a lot of time and you will have these weaknesses on on e4 and c4. I go bishop b7 immediately and it's playable, of course, but you have some problems with the center. Of course, you can play knight c6 now or bishop c6. The position is difficult for both colors. But somehow I have pressure on these two pawns and you didn't get this ideal structure like in Hedgehog with the bishop on e2, pawn on f3 and bishop on e3. There is still a lot of um, necessary moves to make. On the other hand, black already has some pressure. So that's the reason why uh, Olga didn't play d4 at all. Instead, she went for a queenside advance by h3 and rook b1. But black reacted very calmly and normally. And when you look at white's position, too many, too many nuances, right? Too many uh, sort of smart moves. And black played such a, in such a normal way that it should be okay. And it really is. And Actually, these normal moves were enough for uh, for a good position. And when you see this position after f4 h6, I mean, if if you uh, if you ha have to take if you have to take on f6, then everything is bad. I mean, you don't throw these uh, bishop pairs away such so lightly. So I don't I don't like White's play at all. In the opening is clever, but when you don't know how to follow, it's uh, it's bad, right? Maybe she was waiting for knight e5, and then she realized that Black doesn't want to go knight e5, and she didn't know what to do next. I mean, bishop f4 would be a correct move, I think. Yeah, with approximately equal position, but giving up this. Uh, giving up this bishop is very bad strategically and I like black's position then and I think uh, black has a very nice advantage the opening didn't work out I mean if Carlsen play plays that it's completely possible I don't know <laughs> then probably with some other idea and actually I I don't think c4 is bad but I think rook e1 could have been played, follow, followed by c3, going into this Ruy Lopez position with c3, d4, and that's, I think, actually a clever idea. Maybe I, I will try this bishop a4 move in the future. I don't know if, if I do remember it, <laughs> of course. So, uh, we have uh, a good position for black there. And I will have a look at Czech girls. After knight e5, bishop e2, b5, a3, bishop b7, bishop f4, short castle, rook a d1, this is completely normal, and now we have rook takes d6. Come on, Teresa. She is in a good form. I like this one. So... It's a chaos. If black takes, then I take. Queen e7 is forced and at least I win an exchange back. I don't know if I'm going to take it, though. But at least I have the possibility and the position should be around equal and black has some compensation for the pawn. Or black can go knight g6 exactly and it happened in the game. But then I go e5. And it's unclear to me who is better and why. I like white's position, though, because what are you going to do after e5? Maybe, well, if you go knight d5, then I can, in any case, I can go bishop d2, and the position seems to be better for white, right? I'm a pawn up. You don't have any counterplay. It's good, but... Knight e4 is uh, more annoying. Now if you take, then I can play something like c3. 
but that one is not that good, right? Bishop d5. And black do have some counterplay on the queen side. This knight is a little bit vulnerable. Knight takes f4, then rook d8, exchanging rooks, and I think black has enough counterplay for the pawn. It should be around equal, I think. Yeah, so I'm expecting something like that. So Teresa is okay against uh, rating favorite. And then we have these duels, uh, board number 32 and 33. Uh, okay, Natalka played bishop a7 and we got into this variation I already show, shown you. And this is just resignable. Sad massacre in 18 moves. Very nice game from white, sadly. Not for Natalka. Maybe she is depressed after tomorrow, no wonder. Maybe she didn't sleep too well because this is just lost. Don't see any chance. I mean, after f takes e5, taking the rook I take, and then this is just a massacre. Okay, so if you go, let's say, queen d8, I can even take on h7, right? Why not? And then I have this idea. Also, also simple queen f3. So maybe bishop b8, queen f3, something like that. King e7, bishop takes g7, and black resigns, right? No, this is not good. And the next one, the game between Anička Lhotská and Julia Mosesian. Uh, Anička played a5, which is an interesting move. And now c3. Okay. Hmm. And before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she underestimated Black's position. I know the computer is saying that White has even slight advantage, but. Uh, from human's perspective, the initiative of black on the king side is very annoying, at least to my eye. Mm. Because there is this knight f4 possibility. The attack on the through the f file, some sacrifices on h3. And on the other hand, of course, if white survives this attack, then maybe c4, rook a3 idea or something like that. And in an end game, there is a possibility that it will be better on the queen side. And that's what computer sees. Yeah. You know, computer is not afraid of this attack on the king side and uh, it sees the advantage on the queen side. So the correct continuation is just to take on a5. And it even recommends queen takes a5, which is not going to happen going to take with the rook, of course. And then, of course, white can play c4 and hope for a positional advantage on the queen side. On the other hand, in a normal human game, the initiative of black on the king side is somewhat more dangerous. It's difficult to play with white. And exactly what happened in the game. I mean, these two moves b4 and c3 and a5, they are actually quite good, objectively. But it's a huge underestimation of black's chances on the king side. And it was necessary to be prepared for this attack, right? So maybe instead of this, I don't know, a5 or... I would play bishop e3 immediately, forces him to take, and then I would take with the pawn. And then I covered this f2 square. I opened my rook, and I can play this b4 move later on. What happened in the game is that white took on a7, and now she took on a5. And after rook takes a5, it's already very difficult to cover knight f4. And what happened in the game is knight d2 and knight f4. And now white is thinking, but it's already too late, because these three pieces are going to massacre 
why it's king. Right, because now d5 is also hanging, so you're supposed to play queen e4, right? What else? To cover this pawn. But then I go rook g5 and you resign. As simple as that. And if white would have, I don't know, some defensive moves on the queen on the king side already played, then it would be a different story, right? But there are no defensive moves played. And it's too late now. Yeah, this is an important lesson for Anička. Uh, good game by Yulia Mufsesian. Uh, choosing the, the calm opening and outplaying Anička by a kingside attack. And uh, yeah, it's another lesson, you know. As I can see the results, Anička, uh, you don't see that, but I do that she gained 39 rating points during this tournament so far. 39, it's a lot. Uh, it could have been even better. But this loss is, of course, painful. She is going to lose this one. And uh, it's painful. But it's a lesson that you really need to pay attention to your opponent's possibilities. And it was much better to take here with the pawn, blocking this square, and maybe gaining even a slight advantage strategically than to play b4 and after f5 uh, after rook takes f5 it's already bad for white it's dangerous on the king side so this was an important lesson after knight f4 me this rook g5 is coming and there is no defense after that so i each will think but uh, it's already too late and in 20 moves, she is going to resign. Uh, again, again, it was necessary to understand how dangerous this f5 is and play bishop e3 in this position. Or this a5 move is not bad, you can play bishop e3 later on. But even this b4 already, it's suspicious. And after f5, it's necessary to take. And after rook takes f5, there are some defensive moves like king h2, but it's already difficult for a human. So yeah, I don't like this all, but I'm waiting for him to take because then I take with the f-pawn and then I'm okay. So at least wait, wait for bishop takes e3. This bishop takes a7 is actually a mistake already. So yeah, now we get back to the, to the board number one and the biggest jewel for, for the European Championship title. And we see only two moves have been played since we saw the game for the last time. And we had this on the board actually in our analysis. So exactly what we expected that happened. And I told you that knight a5 is an annoying move for a human. And I'm a little bit worried that Monika Sochko is not going to handle this pressure because she is worse. Uh, she is in sort of a time trouble, but probably these clocks are not accurate because now it jumped to 37 minutes again. So maybe white is in a time trouble actually. But anyway, the position is unpleasant for, for black. And now I think she's going to take with the bishop on d1. We had that on the board. And for a human, it's difficult to understand that the pawn structure after knight takes e5, b takes e5 is actually not that bad for black. It's a surprise for me. I would try to save this bishop somehow, I don't know, playing rook c8. But this is bad, and I can understand that. Because after e5, I had big problems with my knight. It's not attacked now, because I can't take on f6, but anyway... Uh, the rook is not going to be, be pinned forever, and this is unpleasant. White has a big pressure in the center, and also it's opening up diagonals for the pieces. I don't like this position. A rook d1 on the board. We have this on the board, and I'm worried that Monika Sochko is going to be punished. But anything can happen, and we see that on the second board where I praised 
the play of Gunai Mamadzada, but she didn't use the opportunity of bishop takes e6, and it's like in football, when you don't score a goal, you uh, you are going to suffer one, because after bishop b7, white for some reason she played e4, which is actually a very bad move, I don't know why she played e4. And after g4, knight h4, suddenly computer says minus 2. Um, and the reason is that black is going to play c5. And these two moves, like e4 and knight h4, it, they were very bad. And it allowed black to play c5 and be completely safe because the pawn only blocked the diagonal for the queen. And actually the, the opportunity to play bishop takes e6 was very crucial and very logical because you need to get to black's king. This is the main weakness. And how do you do that? By sacrificing on e6. There is actually not that many other choices. Maybe after bishop b7 also the move knight e4 was relatively okay, activating the knight or knight e5 again. That would be a completely different story compared to the game, because in the game the knight is on h4, and this is just very bad. So, yeah, it's a big stress. Uh, the girls are fighting very hard, both of them. There are many mistakes. Of course, it's easy for me when I see the, um, the bar on the left side. <laughs> I have big guidance, of course. Uh, but as I told you, I can really understand these emotions. Uh, the girls are playing approximately at the same level like me, so I can really understand what they are thinking about. And I think that black is happy now, and white knows perfectly that something went terribly wrong. But it happens from time to time. And usually I, I can understand only after the game. You mean... I, I would be so furious as, as Gunai Mamadzada now, because, I mean, she understands perfectly that something went wrong, but it's possible that she she don't know what to do, right, after g4. She didn't like knight e4, knight e5 anymore, because of this b4, I think. So, she is furious, and she doesn't know where it went wrong, and she will realize only after the game that this move e4 is actually a bad move strategically and she will learn a lesson and next time it will be better. It's just never ending story for a chess player. Uh, and now of course we can understand that knight e5 is correct or knight e4. Uh, so next time she will not play this move e4. Yeah. Okay, I will have another short break. Thank you for being here with me. Don't be afraid to ask in chat if you want to see some specific game. Uh, and uh, I will be back in, let's say, 15 minutes. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.
Okay, welcome back, dear chess friends and chess fans, uh, to the ninth round of European Women Chess Championship 2022. Uh, here you see the second board, which is currently going on, uh, the match between Gunai Mamadzada and uh, Maria Gevorgian. And sadly for White, she missed a very nice tactical opportunity, bishop takes e6, uh, which was uh, sort of a, a move of Mikhail Tal. Uh, he would sacrifice that immediately. Uh, but uh, not that it leads to a very nice attack of White. It's also objectively correct, as uh, the computer says. You can see the bar on the left side of the board, which is screaming that White's winning. Well, to my eye, uh, it's not that clear, of course, but uh, I can understand that White needs to be aggressive in this position. In the game, she continued with bishop b3, and, well, if you see the position after e4, g4, knight h4, and c5, you finally, you will understand that... Uh, Uh, that's c5 is a move uh, for black that shows that black is gaining uh, the initiative, uh, which is a problem for white, of course. And, uh, you know, this missed opportunity for white is actually uh, quite something, because if black uh, gets the initiative, it will be the other way around. Now c4 is threatening already. And uh, yeah, it completely, uh, completely turned, turned around. Uh, now I think c4 is possible and it should have been played. And after f takes, uh, d takes f8, f takes e6, honestly, I don't know why black didn't play c4. I think girls are quite nervous already and we are approaching the time control, approaching time travel and of course, we will see some mistakes, that's normal in a human game. But uh, from, from, the, from the variations, I can see that the tension is really there and the tension is growing, because this is not that difficult. I mean, the point behind is that after queen d2, there is a very nasty move of bishop g5 and black is completely winning. So, I would play c4, of course. But black played e5 instead, which is not winning a piece, right? Uh, at least white has some hopes of uh, jumping with the knight to f5. So it's not that clear anymore. Now white wanted to make space for the bishop on c2. And of course the position is already better for black. Let's, let's compare it again to the position after bishop takes e6. And I think you see the difference, right? It's enormous. So please, in your games, when you feel that you have some advantage, don't let it slip. Because especially in such uh, complicated positions, it can not only slip, but it can easily be better for your opponent. Uh, because now black's, black gets initiative, and that's what uh, it, this position is about. And now, again, black needs to be aggressive. And b4 is the correct move, I think, in this position. Attacking the knight on c3, uh, keeping the initiative going. It's not clear. I mean, this position is very complicated, and you can see that the bar is confused. Um, the position is very complicated, and we will see a very big fight here on the second board. The first board, though, uh, is still slightly better for a young Azerbaijani player, Ulvia Fatalieva, because Monika Sochko is under pressure. Bishop takes d1 happened, as I told you. <laughs> as I told you, look, see, it happened. Uh, yeah, I expected this move. Computer was showing something like knight fd7, allowing white to take on c6, and he was not afraid of uh, b takes c6, or it was not afraid. Um, But for, for human, it's very difficult to allow knight takes c6, so at least she covered the bishop by the rook. 
e5 on the board, that was also my suggestion, and now knight takes c6 and knight takes d5. I think there is bishop f3 possibility. I don't know why, why it was missed, I don't know. Uh, queen d2, I don't like this one, but okay, it's also possible. Maybe black has to go knight c7 now, which is a little bit passive, and black still has some troubles, so it's still a game. And thank you very much for the comments. Uh, we have a request for board number 10. Okay, but first I will react on the comment of Ritan, hello, that we have the possibility of b4 after bishop takes e6. Yes, that's a possibility, I didn't analyze, that's true. But on the other hand, um, I mean, in any case, I can take on d7, right? And I'm a pawn up. So I think b4 is not the reason why uh, Gunai Mamadzada didn't play bishop takes e6. I think uh, the reason is that uh, this move didn't enter her mind at all. Because if it did, then she would play it. But somehow, somehow, this move didn't enter her mind. And uh, I think that's the reason. I actually have my own experience. I played some similar position with black and also bishop takes e6 didn't enter my mind at all. I realized it, this possibility too late and I lost the game. Uh, it was a painful experience. So now I go to the board number 10. There is Dina Belenkaya against Mainarva. Those are players are I didn't check during my commentary. There are a lot of interesting games, so thank you for the tip. What do we have there? Uh, yeah, this bishop f4 line. Um, I think it was uh, pop popularized by Richard Rapport. Uh, it's a possibility. <laughs> I don't know the theory, sorry. Uh, it was also a surprise for Black, I think, because she was thinking for seven minutes on her move. And then White started thinking, so they are out of book now, which is actually good for, for chess. Uh, Black can, of course, transfer the game to the some sort of Sveshnikov by playing d6 and e5. But not everybody wants a Sveshnikov game. Uh, and apart from that, I don't see a move for black, actually. I am not an expert here, so... Yeah, I would choose between d6 and bishop c5, and bishop c5 was played. Now, short castle. Okay, bishop c7 played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, queen e7 and bishop d6. Trying to play for the blockade. Oh, this is a nice move. I like this move very much. Uh, stepping from the Queen's exchange uh, and Black wants to fight against this d6 blockade with Queens on board. I like this one. Knight c7, rook b8 and bishop e2 and then b5. Very logical from both sides. I like, I like this game. e5, very good. Fighting for the initiative. b4, good one. E takes and B takes C3. This is a fighting game, guys. I like this one very much for both colors. And I know computer shows like plus one, but uh, it's not clear at all. I don't know what the evaluation is. I honestly have no idea. So uh, not every advantage of plus one is uh, understandable for a human. Actually, if I have to pick a side, I would pick black here, actually. Maybe a surprise for you, but I really don't like this knight on c7. It's misplaced a lot. But it can go to b5, yeah. Yeah. Now I understand. Because I wanted to say that the knight is trapped, but it's not. So, yeah, now I understand. And yeah, this one is strong. This queen g3 move I like. And then taking with the queen. So now I would pick white, actually. It's a very tactical position. So the opening went well for Dina Belenkaya. 
uh, but it's not clear. But they played a very nice game. Those moves are logical. They are fighting for the initiative. And uh, uh, now this move knight e4 I don't like. Because finally the knight got to a square where it can be proud <laughs> of himself. This is a very nice square for the knight. So why to go away? I... I can feel that queen a3 was the best solution to the problem. Um, yeah, the bar on the left side is confused. I have this tactical explanation for my move. And somehow I feel that black is going to be in a trouble. Because knight b4 is the logical reaction. But then I, I make long castle. And I really do like white's position now. I feel that I have a good peace coordination, protected the knight on d6, black has no threats. I mean, I can cover this mate on c2, right, by playing rook d2, so black has no threats. And these pieces are tactically sensitive. I can see a lot of problems for black in this position. So making a long castle was actually a way to go in this very interesting game. But I do not like knight e4. This is, uh, this is bad. You're stepping out of the sun, let's say. But I can understand because this queen a3 move is difficult. And it's not that clear. I mean, black can go knight d4 then. So I can understand why it was not played, but it was a way, uh, it was a correct way to go. And uh, here, bishop d3, for example, holding the c2 square and yeah it's better for white now on the other hand in the game the knight went to c5 i mean this is a brave knight right it jumped to c7 where it was dangerous so the knight jumped to d6 and now he jumped to c5 that's a brave knight but honestly, I think the d6 was the best square for the knight. It should be on d6, like forever. Uh, the transfer of the knight to c5 is not good. And immediately the, the evaluation changed dramatically because black gained the initiative, he gained the momentum. It's something in chess which is difficult to explain. Um, it means... To have an initiative means that you are the attacking side. You are saying what will be next. You are attacking your opponent's pieces. And it's very useful because uh, you put your opponent under pressure. And that's exactly what happened to White. And there is another psychological factor that for a human it's very difficult to live under pressure. And uh, we tend to make big mistakes under pressure. So that's another reason why you fight for the initiative, because uh, the probability of uh, your opponent going wrong increases dramatically. And that can also be seen in this position, because I really can understand what, uh, what they are thinking about. <laughs> they are playing similar level like me. Uh, why didn't like this knight at all? No, she was terrified. And she played this one, which destroys the knight. But on the other hand, the king is, is in a very bad shape here on e2. And this is basically lost for white after d5. I do not see any, any defense. So she avoided the immediate danger by playing knight d3. She exchanged the knight on d4, but she got into a lost position now after d5. Yeah, um, very interesting game. And it's a pity for Dina Bilinka that she didn't... Uh, she wasn't able to, to keep the knight on d6 because it's a completely different story. When you compare it to the game, after d5, you can see the difference, right? With the knight on d6, it's a, it's a different story. When you keep the knight by playing queen a3 and then long castle, 
black didn't get this counterplay and I will have a safe king on c1. After knight d4, I go bishop d3. And this is a completely different position. And then almost any, after almost any move, I make long castle. Yeah, but difficult. Of course, black will fight, right? But there is also another weakness on f8, the tactical weakness. So, yeah, this is already difficult for black. But this is difficult for white. And we have d5 on the board. Okay. Yeah. I can understand this. Um, now white will need to, to find some place for the rooks and for the king. Maybe, I don't know, rook ae1 and then king d1, but it looks horrible. No, no. This is going to end uh, in a victory for black, I think. So that was number 10. I thank you for the comment, Ritan. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 turned really quite well for black, that's true, and you said that it was a possibility to go, not to go a6, but queen f6, but th no, th this doesn't change the character of the game. It was good for white initially, but then it turned, turned out good for black, but it was due to white's mistakes uh, in a difficult situation. So let's go for the Czech players. I'm looking forward to the game of Teresa. We left uh, the game here. And she played this e5. Okay, that's good. That's good. She played e5. And actually, knight d5 happened, which is uh, also a possibility. I told you that I would go knight e4. Uh, exchanging this knight and gaining access to the c4, c2 pawn. It was also a possibility, but knight d5 is not bad, but bishop d2 is a logical reaction. And this is something that computer does not like at all. I don't know why, honestly. I don't know. Knight takes, bishop takes as a possibility. Bishop c3 now. Well, it's unclear, but I can see white having an initiative on the king side, even if black somehow gets uh, to, to win the exchange, then I open my bishop and if I will be able to play h4, h5 in time, then I'm mating you on a g7, so I have big compensation. Uh, in the game, Teresa played knight a5, which is an interesting solution to the problem, actually. I like this move after 10 minutes of thinking. And in a time travel, black played queen c8, which is strange. But I I think, yeah, it's, this position is too difficult for both players. Because now, of course, h4 is like an immediate response, right? h4. You go h4 and you will see what happens next. Because black can, of course, take the exchange, but as I told you, this position is not simple at all. h5 is a huge threat, and even computer shows it's winning for white. That's a surprise for me. I wouldn't say it's winning, but I can say white has a big initiative, and I'm not that surprised by, by the computer evaluation, because how you are going to stop h5? This is going to be very strong. In the game, knight e4 happened, and the knight wants to jump to d6, <laughs> but after knight, uh, bishop takes d6, she realized that knight takes d6 is not that strong because of queen takes c2. So she changed her mind and she took with the pawn. Yeah, that's, that's a pity, right? Um, of course, now uh, it's perfectly clear that h4 was a better move. Luckily for white, queen takes c2 is no longer possible because bishop d3 will be on the board and suddenly it's uh, bad for black because the queen is attacked and the bishop's attacked. And also after queen c8, now I can play rook c1 or I can play this h4 again. <laughs> I like this move a lot. And again, it, this, this is... Uh, very dangerous for black. 
So she is not going to take on c2, at least I think so. And f5 is the correct move here. We have to fight for the initiative on the king, king side. And then, I don't know, f4 or queen takes c2, dip, depending on what white will do. Uh, this is clearly the best move by far. So f5 is supposed to happen. Usually uh, it's a good move on the king side in, in the right moment, but it's difficult to find the right moment for it. Of course, knight g5 can happen and the position is not clear at all. And then maybe queen takes c2, then some mating attack on h7. It's difficult to create something here, but maybe even bishop h5 is possible. Okay, this is a position for Michal Tal. Takes, takes, takes. And then I would like to go queen h4, but sadly for me, he just jumps knight f6 and he defends everything. How is that possible? And if I take, I am still an exchange down. So queen d5 and we ran out of ideas. Sad story. So this f5 is a strong move. Interesting. Okay, we will see. And then we will revisit the board number 11, as uh, Ivan uh, wished in the command section. Yeah, we left this one very, very early, early in the opening. But I told you, this is a very important move, bishop e6 in this variation, uh, in this kind of Sicilian. So if you want to learn this variation for black, uh, you should really study this game. Irina knew her stuff. So this one is actually good for black because the bishop is very well positioned on e6. Then you can go f6 correctly and you can play this position with uh, bishop pair. You can play on forever. It's slightly better for black in a practical game, but it's not easy because this bishop is somewhat stuck and also this is vulnerable a little bit, but on the other hand, it's the bishop pair. And I've seen many games where, where black went g5 in the near future and got an initiative on the king side. It was also played very similar, similarly in a, in a top games um, of uh, world top 10. And actually the very similar thing happened here today. Uh, black went bishop c2 and then g5. So I think Irina really knows her stuff here. And she gained an initiative on the king's side, which is very annoying for white now. And uh, yeah, bishop e5 was a must now. Instead she took, and uh, maybe I would take with the rook, right? Or even bishop takes d4. But okay, yeah, this is somewhat surprising to me. Yeah, but anyway, I, I know computer shows it's equal, but for a human, this position looks very bad for white. So I'm wondering if... No, why? Why? Why you are doing this, Irina, to your position? I mean, why? If you want to do queen d7, you can do it now. Why you are giving up this pawn? Because it was possible to take with the king, right? Where is the problem? Come on. I don't see any problem. Well, I know that computer shows it's equal, but it shows that the only move is queen a3. And that's the move. I mean, I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's not going to be played. Uh, no, now it shows a logical one, yeah. Rook e5 after a long thinking. Okay. I can understand this one, but in any case, black has a strong initiative and I can take on h3 or I can play even calm h6, sacrificing this pawn. Then I will go like queen e6 or something and I will sacrifice this pawn, but for the initiative on the king side. Maybe black wanted to do the same, but this is not exactly the same because white has better peace coordination. And there is a possibility of possible queen's exchange. So this is not the same. I mean, in this variation, it would be different. There is no queen's exchange. And also, 
For example, after this, when you take with the queen, I think it's already winning for black because I take and then I go rook c2. And even without queens, my initiative is like, no, this is just lost for white. So you see these, these small uh, differences in, uh, in evaluation of the position. Uh, after a very nice opening, uh, Irina Bulmaga played a very nice plan with bishop c2, g5. But then somehow in a time treble, because you can see that the time treble is beginning, uh, she didn't find the correct moves. And in this in game, black is only slightly better. Okay, my. Why is, why is she going on the other side? I would expect that white wants to have the knight near the king, right? So knight f3. Yeah, but the rook f4 move is annoying, so. Maybe she refused to play this one, but anyway, anyway, okay. Knight b3, rook f4 now, anyway, I think is going to happen. And, oh, I don't know. White is slightly worse. Black has better light, light piece, the, the light squared bishop. It's better than the knight. On the other hand, the material is very limited. So I think it should be holdable for white. Even there is such possibility like, like rook c7, doubling up the rooks on the 7th rank, or you can play rook e3. But it's slightly better for black still. So that's the board number 11. It's holdable for Tiana Blagojevic, and she can defend. It was a very nice game from Elena Bulmaga, but then she somehow she underestimated this, this queen takes d5, queen e5 maneuver, I think. So let's go to the top boards. And to my surprise, I see another draw between Inaga Ponenko and uh, Gunai Mamadova. But I see that both first boards are equal. How is that possible? Yeah, we left the game somewhere around here. And I told you that Monica is under pressure. But maybe White was in a big time trouble, and she still is. And somehow she was not able to increase the pressure now. But for a reason I don't understand, she's refusing to play bishop f3. Like for five moves already. The bishop is perfect on f3. Right? It's, it protects the king. It's perfect on the long diagonal. I mean, where is the problem? Instead she played queen a5 and the bishop is still sitting on d1, which is actually a problem, because there is no peace coordination. I, mean, I don't know if she wanted to take on a7, I don't know, but now f4 is hanging, and we are missing this move. Uh, and now after b6, yeah. Yeah. Monica is changing the situation, now the coordination of the pieces is okay. And maybe even black can gain the, the upper hand, because I can imagine this king to be weak. And actually, please don't make such moves like queen a5. Right? Because the queen is going too far away from its own army. And instead of playing bishop f3 and having a better position, this queen a5 could cost, could cost uh, Ulvia game and it would be yeah it's a bad news already because uh, we know that Monica Sochko has seven points and she has a one point lead over Ulvia Fatalieva and I think White really wanted to win this game but I think she overpressed she was thinking like maybe she's going to win this pawn but it didn't happen and and, you know, I can understand these emotions. White is angry and she can easily overpress in this position. I played so many games like this. Like I jumped to e6 and then because my opponent is angry that it didn't work out too well, she uh, or he would play something like f5, right? In this position and then I jump to d4 and I win the game. It can happen so easily. I mean, it's not clear, right? It's not clear. The position is not clear. 
but after knight queen e4, I can play c4, for example, opening up the c5 square for my queen, and I gain the initiative. And that's what we are talking about, it, especially after such a game, it's difficult to defend in a time travel position like this. This would be such a difficult task for, for Ulvia, because now black is gaining the initiative, and we are seeing that the game uh, is getting out of hand for white. So I'm expecting knight e6. Of course, white can, uh, can take on e6 with the bishop. And maybe even the best choice. And if I, if I take with the queen, then the rook in game is pretty drawish, but maybe I can take with the pawn and keep the queens, queens on board because white's king is weak. And I wouldn't want to play this position as white. I know objectively it's a draw, but no. It's not something I would want because the d file is in black hands. And let's say rook e2, h5. I know computer will handle this, but from a human point of view, it's already difficult for white, I think. Yeah, and imagine if Monika Sochko wins the game, then the title is already almost decided, right? Like eight out of nine, it would be really something. And she would have a one point lead for the last two rounds, at least, maybe even more. But don't be too hasty. There is still a game. On the other hand, knight e6 is on the board, as I suggested. Well, it was, an, it was an easy move, and it's suddenly slightly difficult for white to handle the situation. So we will see what Ulvia will do, and we will move to the second board, where after d5, black could play c4, winning a whole piece, right? And I, honestly, I don't get the reason why this didn't happen. Maybe, now I see, maybe knight g6, right? But there is bishop g5 anyway. Well, I can take first on b3 and then play bishop g5 with a check. Always after f4, there is an unpassant, unpassant check. That's a big issue. And if you go king b1, I go knight c5. I don't know, maybe she missed this one. And then you need to go back and then I can do almost everything, right? I can even play a dump, dump a move like rook g8. And I am a piece, piece up. Uh, I have more active pieces. You have no threats. I'm just completely winning. So, yeah, this was a missed opportunity for Maria Gevorgian to, to win the game and to have seven and a half out of nine. Instead, she played e5, and I'm not saying this is a bad move. Uh, objectively, uh, black is still better, but it's not a piece, right? And it would be better to have the piece. After knight a4, already the position is difficult, and... Uh, Okay, computer is showing minus two and a half, but I don't understand why. I don't know. Some bishop a6, maybe the initiative is strong, that's probably true, but it's already difficult for a human. Bishop g5 happened, and bishop a6 then, suddenly it's equal, I don't know. Queen takes g4, and bishop b5, okay, logical. But the reason why this move was not good is that the knight gained the access to the f5 square. And the knight is perfect there. Yeah. On h4 it was very stupid knight. And with the pawn on e6 the knight had no future. But suddenly it's on f5 and this is a game. Of course you can take the knight but uh, this is not clear at all. I go knight takes c4 probably and I don't know this is just a chaos then d6 and uh, a chaos 
Knight f5 happened correctly, but then after bishop takes a4, for some reason b3 happened? No, this is a very nervous game. I think after the game the girls uh, will be pretty angry with her play, both of them. This is... Uh, um, yeah, they are... I think they are very nervous. I know the position is very difficult, I can understand that, but... I mean, everybody can see that knight d6 is the correct move. I mean, it's not that difficult, right? You lure the king to e7 where it is very vulnerable, and then you take, and then you take, and got no spot. On the other hand, after b3, you weaken your own king, and after a takes b3, a takes b3. Of course, I'm not supposed to, to, to move the bishop. I can make long castle, for example. That's an option. Also, I can play knight c5. Also, I can play knight f6. I have many good moves here. So, um, the difference between knight d6 and b3, I think, is quite clear. Even if you win the bishop, it's not going to be easy after, after b3. Right? So, no, this is not something I would like to see. Anyway, anyway, we will stay here because they are approaching time travel and they will have to move pretty fast in this very complicated situation. Maybe even I would suggest to move queen c5 here. I maybe even like this. This move, like most, because I block knight d6 move, which is very annoying, and I lure white. I want him to take on a4 because it only weakens his own king. I want him to take this bishop. Then I go b3, and I don't think you are going to survive this one. a takes b3, and maybe even queen a3. Come on. And what? I win, right? Everything is going uh, to the queen side. How? c3 is a massive threat now. So what are you going to do? Queen f3? It's already a very passive move. Maybe something like that, but I can calmly play rook b8, right? Winning the game. Suddenly, white pieces are very stupid and the king is under heavy pressure, but it was caused by the move b3. Without the move yeah, it's uh, completely different. You can even take here first, right? Because black has no other square than e7, and then knight takes c4 again. This is completely different comparing to the game after b3. Maybe even this move, queen c5, is very strong. But I can also take on, on b3. Um, it's also better for black, I think. But okay. Of course, the position is very complicated, very complex. I don't know what Maria will play. Um, let's have a look at the first board, just for a second, what happened there. Yeah, she, she didn't play a move. She's angry with herself. It's very difficult to handle such situations. I think we may see a win for black here. But okay. I mean, she is not a bad player with a rating 2400, so maybe she will handle. I would suggest bishop takes e6, getting rid of the knight. Because otherwise the knight will jump to d4 and bad things will start. And after seven minutes, okay, it was too white, she really took on e6. Uh, now black has uh, a choice between queen takes e6 and f takes e6, and this will decide uh, how the game will continue, because after queen takes e6, uh, we are gonna see the queen's exchange, and the, the end game is slightly better for black. But it's much easier to hold the end game only with rooks. So if black wants to win, she is going to take with the f pawn. If the draw is enough for her, maybe she is tired or anything, then she will take with the queen. So now we, we see what's actually 
complex strategy in this game because uh, yeah it's a huge difference I don't know yeah I would take the pawn of course but it's easy to say for me um, so we return yeah and we see c takes b3 on the board and bishop b5 which keeps the piece but it also allows white to give knight d6 check and I think the second chance will be used knight d6 will be played and suddenly it's no longer clear right you have to go back so no castle is possible and then I don't know Maybe even queen takes g5 is possible, no? Right? Oh, that's a nice combination. And then I even take. Oh, this is like stupid. <laughs> no, it's not possible. It's not working at all. I mean, the, the maximum what I get from this position is a draw after, after this. But I will not get a draw. No, this is just stupid. But instead of queen takes g5, I can play f4, for example. And uh, black is a piece up, I know. But maybe it would be more unpleasant if the bishop stays on a4. Because I wouldn't take it anyway. So why to move it to b5? Queen c5 was much better option. Here, I don't believe in in black winning this game. This is a tough round. The ninth round of the championship seems to be like the most fighting one. Never seen such tension. And there are many mistakes that are understandable for humans. Uh, for example, here black could play knight c5, but what I do like most after b3, which is, you know, I, I was, uh, I was told that it's bad to move pawns in front of my own king and I try to keep keep this in my mind when I when I play chess uh, and again the rule is correct uh, b3 is not a good move and I really do like queen c5 a very strong reaction getting this under control the square on g6 and after b takes a4 play b3 and gain the initiative, start an attack on White's king with an equal material, but not an equal position. What happened in the game was bishop b5, and we can expect knight d6 to happen, and suddenly it's White who has an initiative, and especially this move f4 I do like, and then it's anybody's game. So we return to the first board. Okay, it's tough today. And Monica is still thinking whether she is going to take with the pawn or with the queen. Yeah, it's a tough decision, right? But she has not unlimited time. She, she has only 11 minutes now. And I think she spent too much time on this decision. Because either you want to play for a win and then you take with the pawn, or you are satisfied with the drawish position, and then you take with the queen. And so, so it's a question about your feeling, about your uh, situation, uh, current situation. It's not about calculating variations, because you don't calculate this till the end. The evaluation is the same after both F takes e6 and queen takes e6, black is uh, very slightly better. The evaluation is the same. So it's a matter of taste. And you usually do such decisions in a short amount of time because calculation doesn't help. So when you see these two options relatively with the same evaluation, you just decide by, by intuition and what you feel is better. And what do you calculate here? I mean... After f takes e6, you don't guess the next move, right? You don't know what white would do, especially in a time treble. Don't know at all. Maybe rook e2, I don't know. But also a4 is possible with a plan of a5. And maybe king f2. So what do you calculate here? Nothing. 
So you just decide uh, by your heart, uh, by your understanding of the game, what do you feel is better, and also by your situation. If you feel tired, if you want to win the game, or the draw is enough for you. And you don't think uh, about this decision because the time is needed for a calculation in the future. We still have 10 moves to go, so I think it would be better to make this decision in one minute. But maybe the transmission uh, crashed, I don't know. We will see pretty soon. And I want to see the Czech games. Uh, we have Teresa Rochstein. And f5 didn't happen. f5 didn't happen. Knight f4 on the board and knight f6. Okay, that's a nice move. I like it. Uh, it was a very nice trick exchanging the knights like that. And suddenly white has a very nice compensation for the exchange. Uh, of course, there were mistakes, but uh, overall, I like White's play in this game. Yeah, Teresa is in a good form. She outplayed her opponent. And now it's the question whether we find the, the last touch. What's this move, right? <laughs> 95. Okay, that's a nice move. Oh, I hope she will play this one. The idea is that after F takes E5, I go Queen G5. And you can't defend f6. It's a mate. Oh my, this would be such a nice move. Come on, Teresa. Let's play this one. Knight e5. Win the game. Oh, this is nice. I like this one very much. Of course, black is not forced to take. She, she can play queen c2, right? But... Then I can take on f7, or I can even play, I don't know, bishop f3, something, or simply rook e1. Because, yeah, if I take, then there are still some problems, king g8. And then, okay, rook d2 is a move. Well, I wanted to say that after knight takes d8, queen takes e2, it's not clear to me. And maybe I did something wrong. I don't want that. So maybe she is afraid of queen c2. That's actually a pretty annoying move. <laughs> Computer shows like pass 7, but it's not clear to me. 95 on the board. Come on, Teresa. This is very nice. Okay, good job. Yeah, she likes uh, those tactical possibilities. And she is strong in such positions. And it seems like she's going to win against uh, women grandmaster. The very strong player, Victoria Radjeva, for from Bulgaria. But we do have this option still. Yeah, very difficult situation. Yeah, I think this move is strong after all. But it's a tough move to make. If you if you take the knight. Right, uh, again, I think after queen g5, there is no defense. And if you take the bishop, I take with my queen, I get access to the pawn on f6, which is very bad for you. Of course, after bishop f3, you don't have to react to this, but then knight takes f7 is a very strong threat. So if you go king g8 to protect that threat, I have this rook c1 move. And I think this is going to fall apart pretty soon. But it's difficult. In the game, oh, that's that's good. Black played queen e8, and that's just bad. So, yeah, this was good, because after queen c2, it would be more difficult to play. Uh, here, it's just winning after knight g4, no? Game over now. I will take this pawn on f6, and you will resign. Or it's even possible to, to take here and to play queen h4. And again, you resign after this. Knight takes g6 is even better, I think. 
Yeah, knight g4 happened, yeah. I think knight takes g6 was better. But anyway, um, more practical, I mean, more practical. Anyway, black is in a time trouble and she is not going to survive this. This knight e5 moves was very nice, so kudos to Teresa. Congratulations for finding such a nice combination. And yeah, black is going to resign soon, at least I hope so. Uh, but uh, I think knight takes g6 was even even clearer, more clear yeah, now than queen h5. Anyway, uh, f5 on the board, but we will switch to another game. So we are in a time trouble, and Natalka is better? Oh my god, what happened here? We left this game after rook takes e5, and I told you, like, Okay, sad news, Natalka will resign. What? <laughs> Bishop e8, okay. Right. <laughs> I don't know what would happen after rook takes e6, because after queen takes f4, I just take on d5, and I don't know, I mean, this position is just deadly lost. That lost. I mean, I can understand this one. So, for some reason, White made a huge blunder because, uh, yeah, I know what she overlooked. I can understand it now. I think she would play uh, Rook takes e6 with a winning position. It's not that difficult. But what she overlooked is that after Queen f3, Black can actually take the Rook because that is Queen f7 with the attacked Queen. And that can actually be overlooked. And the position is also better for white. She is an exchange down, but she has an attack. But you know, it's not a win. It would be better to take on a6. So another hope for Natalka. Come on, we were lucky. We were lucky. She even was able to develop the rook from a check. Oh, another good news. Oh, b5. And I think white is... Uh, white is, I don't know, white is not able to think anymore. This is just like a roulette, you know, you throw the, the small, small ball and you wait where it lands, because I think both players are now in a state of complete shock in this position. Um, so the bar uh, bar is jumping like plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, and we will see what will be the result. Suddenly it's anybody's game. The bishop on a7 is still stupid, but black has an exchange, and okay, it could have been worse, right? And Julia, what happened in Julia's game? Uh, Julia is where? I lost her. Oh. It's still a game? Like, why? We left this game here, and I told you that White is going to resign. Okay, she did not. But after g4, rook takes g4, she lost her queen. Yeah, and somehow I think after rook a8, White should resign here. I can understand the emotions and why she played on, but yeah, against such a strong player. But maybe she knew that Julia had similar end game in one of her rounds. I don't know if it was the first or second round. She also had queen against rook and a piece in a winning position and she didn't win the game. So yeah, somehow I can understand why this continuing, but of course the position is deadly lost. And uh, I will just briefly go through the moves if anything happened in the game. But it looks like uh, white was hopeless all the time and somehow black was able to capitalize on this uh, huge material advantage. And yeah, nothing really happened. The position was still winning all the time. And now after queen d7, the is falling apart. That's a wrap up. 
So let's go back to the first of boards. What happened there? Okay, Black took with the pawn. Come on, let's go. But the mistake, I think, is that it took her 10 minutes. I was, I was talking about it. Uh, I think the decision could have been uh, made quicker. Uh, but... Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's good. It's good. That black to quit the pawn. I've seen Teresa on the hall. So probably she won the game. We have this 15 minute delay, so... Probably... The game already finished. Yeah, we still have this position after f5, but... Yeah, I hope I hope she won the game. So congratulations. And uh, after f takes e6, rook e2 happened. Yeah. Okay, g6, king g2, king f7. Well, actually, I don't like this plan, but okay, I would go h h5 h4. Mm, but maybe white would play h4 anyway, so doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's around equal. Somehow, I don't see a way for black putting enough pressure. What? H5? No way. What is that? I will take the pawn. Give me the pawn. No way white played F H5. Come on. Yeah, as I told you, I can understand this frustration. For humans it's difficult, but I mean to play this move h5, it's, it's a surprising way to lose the game. Um, after king f5, let's, uh, king f2, let's say, well, the game is around equal, but this move is not good. And black is going to take the pawn. And then, of course, white can try something. I don't know what her idea is. Play king, queen f3, king g6, and then... I don't know. I don't know. Let's wait. And let's have a look on the second board. Oh my, what is that? It's just a chaos. So they repeated moves, right? Correctly. They repeated moves. Okay, I can understand that. They repeat... Oh, black didn't want to repeat? What? And after queen takes g5, she would resign, right? Oh, my. Yeah, I think they are both in, in a state of complete shock. I mean, they are... But actually, yeah, I mean, the position is very difficult, but they are playing like beginners, right? It's a, it's a very tough... Emotionally for, for the girls. I mean, this, this is not that difficult. I mean, I can even calculate this one. After after king e7, it's mate, right? And after king g7, I just take the rook. And the king is not going to survive for a long time. And what is important here, that uh, black has no counterplay. So I have material advantage. I have this knight f5, so... This is just lost. For some reason, white didn't take the bishop. She played queen f5. And after bishop f6, somehow black was able to, to block the, the first wave of the attack. So now it's not easy anymore. But what is surprising is that white played this f4 move now. It would be more logical to play it with the bishop on g5. Uh, okay, but f4 is not that bad. I mean, the computer refutation, what we see here, the bar, is something like rook e8, which I don't get. So this is not a blunder of similar level like this, because everybody can see queen takes g5. But uh, here it's already difficult for both sides. So black played king e7, which I do understand. Uh, knight takes, queen takes, d6, that's that's okay. 
now I guess king d8, right? With a very unclear situation. I don't know what the next move is actually. Uh, black can also play king e8, but after king e8, yeah, there is the problem of rook d5, I think. Yeah, the king is better on d8, I, I feel. But yeah, it's anybody's game. Okay, this is just a thr thriller. How do you say it? Action, action movie. Um, Yeah, black wanted to win this by playing king f8? Unbelievable. I mean, I can understand that black is a piece up, right? But white's position is good. And anyway, if anybody is supposed to play for a win, I think, it's white by playing f4. Black refusing a draw by playing king f8 is unbelievable. Uh, so we have d6 on the board. Let's check the first board if uh, Monica took the pawn. Yeah, she took the pawn. And the idea of white was f5, which I do not like at all. I mean, I take another pawn. Come on. Give me these pawns. <laughs> Why you are giving me these pawns? If, if you go queen h6 now, I just go king g8, no? And I can imagine now queen takes h5, right? I'm not saying it's winning for black. But what I'm saying is that you gave me, it's one pawn now, and I can choose between queen f7, queen e6, and after both moves, I see no danger for black. And you will be very happy to make a draw. But it's already much more difficult than, than before. You threw these pawns away uh, because now... And if, if you want, you can prepare it by playing queen f3, right? So, yeah. This is strange. Strange stuff. But the thing is that Monica is now in a time treble and she's missing those 10 minutes that she spent on pretty intuitive decision. F takes e6 or queen takes e6. So she's going to miss these minutes, I think. Um, the problem is for for white is that I mean, yeah black is going to take because she has no other options so after three minutes of calculating she decided that really there is no danger now queen h6 is basically the only move yeah it's on the board already yeah and black has also a very interesting way to diffuse the pressure by playing king e8 and hiding on the queen side, where is it completely safe? Uh, after queen takes h5, that would uh, actually, I think that would happen. I go queen f7. You go, you go queen g5, I think. And uh, I go queen g6. But no, it was difficult for black. She played king g8, which is a human move. and also a very logical one. But the king on e8 would be very useful also for blocking this pawn. But I think it would uh, develop the same. Now we will see queen takes h5 and queen f7, I think. And for example, after queen f3, there is queen d5 exchanging the queens and going into the rook in game with the pawn up. But it's not clear. White can fight on. Like, yeah, but it's on the verge of losing. And I really don't understand this decision to sacrifice two pawns for nothing. Because the rook is very passive on e2. It's not going to work. I don't know, maybe her idea was to play e6. But you can try e6, right? But I'm going to exchange rooks. Or I can even go h4 now. Uh, okay, now queen takes h5 on the board, and now I'm expecting queen f7 or queen e6. And the Polish fans, our Polish fans in the chat, can be very happy 
because Monica Sochko turned the game around and from a bad position she is almost winning now. Really, she is playing a very good tournament, she is in a good form, and even such situations where it looks mm, so so bad for black, uh, for some reason white, I don't know, she, she didn't play bishop f3 in the game and then she ended up in a bad position. And queen f7 on the board, again, a very good move. Yeah. Now it's very tough for white. Okay, so what do we have on the second board? Another roulette. And amazingly, the computer shows plus two again. So white may actually win the game. <laughs> okay, now what do we have? Well, I don't understand it actually. This is very difficult. I'm expecting... Oh, but f takes, f takes e5. I can understand why this is not good, because the d3 bishop is hanging, so I can call my take on e5, and now you can't take anyway. So rook c1 happened, and that's a good move. And now it's a question. It's a tough question, because rook c7 is a strong threat. Yeah, so maybe the trip... The trip with the queen to e3 was not good after all because the queen is missed in the defense and it's not going to do any harm to white because the queen is alone there. So the peace coordination got lost and that's the bad thing. Yeah, the peace coordination is crucial now. This is good for white. So after all these <laughs> crazy things, uh, what? White is going to win the game? I don't know. She was winning in the opening, then she was lost, then she was winning, then she was lost, then she was winning. She's winning now. Okay, the computer shows 0, 0, 0, but I don't think white, uh, black will survive this. How? I mean, what's the defense? Rook c7 is the threat. How we are going to defend this? What, rook e8 maybe? And after rook c7, there is a possibility to uh, to go rook e6. Maybe like this, yeah. I think this will happen because otherwise I don't see any solution to this deadly threat of rook c7. This is a crazy game. They are really fighting very hard for the prices. Uh, there is a big price fund, uh, like I think 60,000 euro, which is uh, actually a lot for our federation who, who organized this event together with our friends from Ave Contact. So 60,000 euro we had to pay. That's a lot for us. and. Uh, I think the girls are fighting also for the prize fund, of course. And yeah, rook c8 happened, uh, which is not a good move. Black didn't handle the pressure, because now anyway, rook c7 is possible, even I can see that. Uh, and black is going to resign. Yeah. There is no perpetual check, I think. You can try that, of course playing queen e1, I go here, yeah, rook c7 on the board, then uh, black will try some checks, because the idea is that I give d takes c7 with the check and now I get access to the to the knight, so I take the knight and then it's a mate, I take just with the queen, and then rook b5, I think, and it's just over. So after rook c7, black needs to give check somewhere, so let's try queen e1, then king c2, I think, queen f2. Yeah, I'm going to chase the queen. I'm going to chase it. And then, after queen g1, I'm going to use the bishop, I think. King d2. And after queen takes g2, finally, or checks are over. And the mating threat remains. And we do have that on the board. 
King C2, that's actually nice. And after, oh my god, such a crazy game, Gunai Mamadzara is going to score a victory. And she will have 7 out of 9. So, that's a great achievement. And she will fight for the European medals. Well, one must say that uh, uh, she really went for it, right? The game was completely crazy, full of mistakes, but one can feel that really White wanted to win. And finally she was able to, to deliver. Now this is lost and I think we will see a resignation from Black because how... No, there is no way to defend now. It's a nice... It's like stairs, you know, I'm going to make stairs with the king and then build a bridge like in a rook in game by playing bishop e2. Very nice game, uh, very tough fight. I, I will uh, switch to the first board because uh, we only wait for the resignation here. Queen f7 on the board, correct, and we really go into that uh, rook in game I told you about. So it really happened, and luckily for both players, but I think mainly for black, we reached the time control, because I think this is on the verge of winning, and it may be even winning by force. So Monica can be happy because she reached the time control, and she will calculate it, I think. The only way for white is to push the pawn forward, as I told you already, but then I don't know. And I don't find the counterplay uh, to be enough, I think. After, let's say, even rook d7, this, this is gonna be lost, right? And then I take, and how do you defend? Well, white has some chances. Truth to be told, it's not going to be easy. Uh, Somehow I don't believe this. And even e6 didn't happen and that's a bad news for white because when I hold this pawn on e6, it's gonna be even easier for me. Now I don't see any chances. You can go like king f4, but mm, this is going to be lost, I think. I'm gonna go h5. Not to let you play rook h2 and all this stuff. And then I'm going to exchange some pawns on the queen side, let's say king g5, rook d3. And then probably you take on f5, right? But then I take on g3 and I have another free pawn. And uh, here I guess you're gonna try a rook h2, right? Probably. Rook h2 now, that's not that clear anymore. Yeah, you hold it somehow. h5 is good, I think. Oh, I give check first. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be winning for black. The idea is that I go king d6 and rook e8 and then I take on e6, but your king is still on the king side. So it's pretty ugly for black or for white. But okay, yeah, I can understand now this move king f3. Instead of playing with the move to uh, with the pawn to e7, she wanted to activate the king, which is also logical. But yeah, somehow I do believe that this should be winning for black, going this h5 move. But it's not that clear. I mean, we will see a long game, I think, in this rook in game after the time control. Black, of course, will calculate it carefully, and it's not that clear. 
And on the second board, yeah, yeah, we will wait till the resignation of black because uh, now after queen g1, king d2, queen f2, bishop e2, they reach the time control, so black can calculate something, but pretty soon she will realize that there is no defense and she will resign. So a big win for Bunaima Manzada, and we are waiting if Monika Sochko will be able to win her game in the rook in game. That would mean that she will have a whole point lead going into two final rounds. And what's even better, she probably will have white tomorrow, which is like, I don't know, have one point lead and white in the penultimate pen round. It's really good, right? I think uh, she is going to have a good night's sleep. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it uh, it looks very good for, for Monika Sochko. Now, and all other games finished in a draw, so it means that Gunai Mamadzada will be the only player with seven points. So Monika Sochko, maybe she will have eight. There is Gunai Mamadzada with seven. And there are players with six and a half. Oh my, well, that's a good chance. And they they played against each other, actually. Oh, I commented on that game. Uh, yeah, Monika Sochko won against uh, Gunai Mamadzada. So they will have uh, different opponents. Okay, so what do we have with the Czech players? And also I should update on the 10th board where uh, Dina Belenka lost the game. Yeah, she didn't handle the pressure. After d5 it's already very difficult. Of course, black is not going to exchange queens. She developed her bishop and moved the queen away. And this is just completely lost. Yeah, the position is very sad. Small little combination now, of course, Already, I think why should resign in this position, right? It's a little bit, I don't know how to say. Um, but okay, she resigned after the time treble, which is understandable. Zero one, and also we checked the board number 11, where somehow Irina was able to win this one. Uh, I told you that the position is unpleasant for, for white. It was a tough game. And after all, yeah, this one is not good, moving the king to e1. Not in every in-game position, the king is good in the center. And now we see the, the pawn on h file. And also we see these two rooks and the bishop. It's not good to move the king to e1. So it was a bad plan. And the king actually was under pressure on e1. You can see that now, yeah. And uh, after rook c2 now, I think black is going to win an exchange and win the game. How about Czech girls? Uh, Teresa Rochstein won, congratulations. We see a very nice trick of 95 and Natalka Kanyakova won the game. Oh my. Well, good for her. Congratulations. Five out of eight. Uh, five out of nine. Okay, sorry. Five out, five out of nine. But still, a very good result. And she is gaining a lot of rating points as a reward. Sad game for. Uh, Marta from Spain, uh, we left the game somewhere around here, I told you it's already anybody's position and uh, somehow Black was able to defend everything and then she gained the upper hand. Somehow she was able to, to activate the rook and then she even attacked White's king. Oh, this is a nice trick. Oh my. Oh, this is such a nice trick. The idea is that after bishop takes d6, there is rook e1, king h2, and queen takes h4 mate, which concluded the game in mutual time treble. 
So Natal Kabon the game, congratulations, and we will see her uh, pretty high tomorrow. And I will I will root for her uh, because I will be doing tomorrow's commentary. So you will see me again. And uh, I hope uh, the last round will be done by our women's captain Tomáš Polák. But I will need to talk about that with him. Uh, but yeah, the penalty made round tomorrow will be done by me again. So it's 3.15 tomorrow. So this was a nice game, yeah, but uh, the opening was not good, I think. Natalka will take the lesson because after this bishop a7 it was like plus 5 and completely winning for white. But it turned around completely. Uh, so what do we have in the game of Julia? Yeah, she won like that. So we can move back to the top games and as we expected, uh, Gunai Mamadzada won. Actually, her opponent didn't resign after bishop e2, but she took the rook and then she moved <laughs> with the king, which is the same like resigning, right? This was not that difficult for Gunai Mamadzada. She is going to make black's king, and on top of that, she is uh, like rook and a piece up, which is really a lot. So, black resigned. So, the only game which actually interests us uh, for the overall standings is the game between Ulvia Patalieva and Monika Sochko that reached very peculiar, interesting rook in the game. And I will uh, enjoy this one after a short break, uh, the last break of the day. So, let's give me like 10 minutes. I will. I will have a short break and uh, I will enjoy the last phase of this game. So thank you for watching and see you soon.
Okay, guys, welcome back to the last phase of the round nine of Women European Chess Championship from Prague. Uh, I will do a short recapitulation because uh, you can see that Kunai Mamadzada won on the second board against Maria Gevorgian and all other games ended in a draw. And we still have one game going on on the top boards and it will be, of course, my choice for the rest of the commentary. Monika Sochko is in this in-game fighting for the lead in the tournament. If she wins, she will have a one-point lead over Gunai Mamadzada, which is actually a lot. Uh, and, we will, uh, and we will have only two rounds uh, till the end of the tournament. So it's a big chance for her to win the title and a very big amount of uh, prize fund. But this in-game is not won yet. We still have a fight and uh, I analyzed it briefly. And after e6, king e7, king f4, Monica actually played the best move uh, we have seen before on our screen. I analyzed it that after king g5 there is this move rook d3 and I think black understood it perfectly that after king takes f5 rook f3 king g5 rook g3 king takes and now something like that the position is very close to be winning for black because white king is very far from the action and this move rook f3 is actually very good so if black calculated it correctly then Congratulations, that's a good achievement. And if white goes king e5, then rook takes g3. It's a winning position. The king is very important on e7. And uh, that may be the reason why uh, Ulvia Fatalieva chose b3 in this position, which is a sort of a waiting move. And uh, yeah, the game continues. This uh, young two... Uh, Azerbaijani girls are in her uh, in their 20s, uh, both of them, and Gunai Mamadzada will also uh, have a good chance to, to earn a medal here uh, on this, uh, in this event. Anyway, how black is supposed to win this position? This h5 move was very good, but we need to create a passed pawn. That's how we win rook in games usually and that's why black played b5 in this position and I, I like this move a lot i think this is already winning because c4 is a big threat and this b3 didn't work so yeah but but anyway uh, probably it was lost computer shows a funny thing that It was the best to go king f4 back, but I don't believe that. Probably the position is lost, and the reason is that, okay, black is a pawn up. Also, this pawn is more weak than strong. And, uh, yeah, I do not see this rook becoming active. It's very important, and that's actually why we play this h5 move, because let's imagine something else. I don't know. Let's play this b5, a stupid move right, uh, in, in this position, then I do believe after rook h2, it would be a draw, because the rook is active now, and if black takes, king takes e6, right, in this position, then white plays rook h6, and then he takes on h7 with a check, and that's a draw. So that that's why h5 move was very important, and it's nice that Monika Sochko played this one, I hope she saw the idea after king g5. Anyway, white played b3 and I think after b5, rook e3, we will see the end of the game very shortly because this position is already winning for black, I think. I can understand this rook e3 move. Uh, computer shows a5 and it's a similar story like with h5 because I wanted to suggest c4, but then I realized that it's a little bit not precise because black can 
oh, white can play b4, and then there is a threat of rook a3. I think it's manageable, right? Black can play, I don't know, rook d2 or something, or, or a6 and rook d6. But on the other hand, why not to play a5 first? I really like uh, the technique of black here. And then c4 will happen, and we will see a win for black. I, I, I think it's already, I think it's already decided because how you are going to stop this c4 move. I don't see any way. So let's say, because the rook is pinned to the e file, that's a big issue. And please remember that in rook in games, uh, fast pawns are very important. But the best way to block the pass pawn in a rook in game is by a king. Because the king is not only blocking the pawn, but it's attacking the pawn. And the rook is pinned to the e-file, otherwise you lose another pawn. So that's a golden rule. Because imagine the rook on e7, it's not the same. So uh, it's a good blockader in a rook in the game. And that's what is deciding the position. Because now white has no counterplay whatsoever. And I, I do, do not even know what to suggest as a move, right? Maybe it is king g5 again. I don't know. But after c4, I, I can't take on h5 anyway because of f4. So maybe like this, yeah, b takes c4 and rook c3, at least to attack something, but then he will go rook c5. And after king takes h5, just simply king takes e6. It's only one pawn, but now the rook is behind the pawn. And this is useless, this is useless, and I, I'm just going to see king e5, king d4 winning the game. So, yeah. Yeah, sadly this position is completely lost. So I will do a short recapitulation over other boards, then I will return, but if nothing moves, I will declare this to be winning for black because we are just waiting for, for white to resign. And I especially like this a5 move and h5 moves. This is very nice. It's important to be precise. And now white has no counterplay whatsoever. I, I do see nothing. c4 is coming. Or, or you lose another pawn, and that is already two pawns, and that's too much. So, uh, about other games. Uh, we've seen Gunai Mamadzara winning, and there are a lot of draws. And surprisingly for me, Nino Batsyashvili is losing today. Yeah, this one. Uh, this one is uh, even maybe even worse than the Rook, Rook in game on the first board. This is just so bad. So, Aline Rebers, uh, she will have a uh, she will have a chance to get a very nice result in the last two two games. And uh, yeah, Nino lost uh, yesterday against Kulnar Mamadova. Uh, it was a very tough game. Uh, we, we analyzed that game. And no wonder she is losing today because yesterday it was a big blow for her. And how about Czech players? Teresa Rochtein won, Natalia Kanyakova won. It was a very funny game. A Julia Movsesian won. And we may get a little bit lower. Eriška Richterová lost against uh, young, uh, young um, Austrian girl, Annika Frevis. I, I think I met her during the women conference. Uh, Petra Sochorová lost against a stronger player. Natasha Richterová is still playing. It's not her tournament. Uh, she is losing like 40 points, but she won last round and hopefully she will win also today and therefore she will move to to some let's say ni nicer places and yeah Anička Kubova lost again today I mean it's really not her tournament she has like two out of nine that's not good and Anička Trasako Adela Trasako I'm sorry won today well it's so far, so good. Three points. Why not? Uh, it's a fight. Also, Karolina Markova looks good today against a Slovak player. It's sort of a derby. Okay. 
yeah, yeah. our girls are fighting, but the, uh, the, the field is very experienced and hard. It's hard for them. But at least they gain some experience. So now we return to this board and Ulvia is thinking maybe we can have a camera. Uh, the camera is real time. We have 15 minutes delay with the, with the transmission. And for some reason, Monica does not look that happy. Oh my, how is that possible? Yeah, some King G5 happened, but uh, I don't get it because to my eyes there is no chance whatsoever. So, yeah, but I'm curious, you know, I'm <laughs> a big chess fan. So. Uh, also, I'm a little bit hungry, but I will survive and uh, I will wait for, let's say, two more moves because I don't know what can... What what can turn out wrong? What can happen here? Because to my eyes, it seems completely winning. I, if you if you see any chance for white, please give me a tip in chat because uh, I would resign here as white, or I would try this king g5. No, but I would rather resign here because king g5 is also very stupid. I mean, this is this is just completely lost position. I I don't know. I don't know honestly. I don't know why they are still playing the game. <laughs> this is just lost, right? Um, okay, okay. Let's check other games that are still in progress. Maybe we will see some interesting in-game. Uh, Olivia Kulbasa played a perfect Olympiad. I sh think she won a medal uh, for, for her performance. But this is not her tournament. Uh, she's losing like 14 rating points, uh, but today she seems to be winning and she has a lot of pawns. Like she said, she's two pawns up, which is a lot in an end game. So I think she's going to win today. And uh, Nana Zagnidze won today. Uh, it's not her tournament, but still she can have uh, like seven, uh, seven and a half out of 11. So I think she will try uh, in the end. Lela Javakashvili, another favorite who is uh, not playing really well this tournament. She has some advantage today with black. It's a typical in-game from Sicilian. Uh, and she has control over the e5 square and f4 square. So combined with the weakness on c2, the position is pretty good for black. But on the other hand, white has... Mm, it's not clear how, how to win this, right? White has a quite stable position with rook on e3, king on f2, knight on c3. So yeah, it will be a long game. And... Uh, if we go back after, yeah, probably, probably we saw on camera that after a long, long thinking, most probably white really played this king g5, but yeah, then I will wait just for one more move, and if it will be c4, then, then it will be the end, because yeah, probably white played king g5 after a long thinking, she realized that there is no chance, of course, Nobody would blame her for, for thinking for these 30 minutes after a time control because it's a decisive game and you want to use every chance you have. So no wonder that she was thinking, but she didn't find anything. So, so she played this king g5 and after c4, most probably she is going to resign. I really don't see any, any chance here. Please, can we have a camera there? Yeah, they are playing something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe she voluntarily got into her own time travel. 
It's actually a very strange psychological trick that was described in a very famous Czech book. Um, we all read, but it was not translated, I think, in, in English. Uh, a very old book uh, where the author described a very peculiar strategy to, to, to get into your own time travel because it changes somehow the nature of the game that may confuse your opponent that he will start to play against your own time but uh, anyway here i think there is no confusion you just go c4 and win the game so mm, yeah let's just wait for another two moves and if it will be king g5 and c4 then then I think we, we will just wait uh, for it. And then I think the position is completely winning for Monika Sochko. And as I told you, it means that she will have eight points out of nine. She will beat uh, Ulvia Fatalieva, who remains then on six points. And only Gunai Mamadzada, only Gunai Mamadzada is on seven points out of nine, which means we will have a Two horse race uh, with uh, with uh, Monika Sochko and Kunai Mamadzada, but uh, yeah, Monika has a big lead. Okay, a three happened. Well, that's something different. Well, that's actually a chance. Okay, she's really putting effort into this because after eleven minutes she came up with a three move, which seems dumb. But I can understand, because after c4, she's going to play b4. That's actually annoying, because, you know, I wanted to play rook c5. Um, and, yeah, black is supposed to play a4 now, and uh, the position is winning, of course. But at least it's something, you know? It's not decided yet. So I really do like this a3 move. You know, chess is a very rich game. And even in such disparate situations, you can create something. That's amazing. I've seen such uh, situations many times in, in my life. And uh, it's amazing how, how rich is our, our game. And yeah, I have a feeling that... Uh, it's not the end of the of the day. Of course, I mean, C4 is supposed to happen, right? Can we have a camera, please? Yeah, the game is still on, and as you can see, Monica is not happy, right? You can see it from the facial expression, from the hands, from the behavior. Something went wrong, and due to anti-cheating reasons, the the moves, uh, the moves what we see uh, on our boards on Chess Twenty Four, they are fifteen minutes delayed due to anti-cheating reasons. So what we see here now is the live camera, but the moves we have are fifteen minutes delayed. Well, personally, I find it a little bit strange because uh, there are a lot of arbiters they can. They can take care of uh, any suspicious behavior. And it would be better for spectators to have the real-time view. But maybe in the future. Okay. We will see. But the game is still on. Come on, guys. I wanted to, to, to end uh, the commentary, but something is really happening. Something strange is happening. Again. <laughs> These girls, they are fighting really hard. Um, Something's happening because the game is, has not ended and Monika Sochko is not happy at all. On the other hand, Ulvia Fatalieva looks quite confident. And you can see that the, the playing hall is almost empty. We see the arbiters on the camera on the top. Uh, but the, the girls on the first board, they are still fighting. And we do not have a move from Monika Sochko, which is surprising because I would expect C4 to be played almost immediately. Because I know that B4 is a little bit annoying, but 
anyway. I go a4, right? And you have another weakness on a3, so please, I mean, this is winning, right? I go rook d3 then. Even I can calculate this one. Like, like come on. Rook d3 and you're going to resign, right? But it was very important to play this a4 move. And curiously enough, the computer says a4 is the only way to victory. And that is already something when you force your opponent to play the only move. Right? Then we can say this a3 uh, attempt to muddy the waters that the attempt was actually successful because you forced your opponent to play the only move. And, well, if she finds this, then you resign, right? But you tried everything, really everything. I mean, <laughs> no way there is something more. Uh, I don't think so. So you tried everything, and when uh, she finds this one, A4, then you resign. But uh, you tried everything. It's already minus six, according to the computer. But anyway, even in minus six positions, you can you can try something. I like this very much. And you can see that Monika Sochko is still thinking. And that is a surprise. Because, um, I don't know. If she sees this, you can play it immediately. It's clear that this is winning. But maybe she wanted to go this rook c5 so badly to support the c5 pawn. Uh, or the c4 pawn. Yeah, that she played something else, actually. Oh, my. But, yeah, this is also good. I like a4. Because after b4, we go into the same position, right? And if you take on a4, then, again, the c pawn is marching forward. So, I like this a4 solution. So b4 happened, and now please, please play the c4, but okay, this one is also winning, I guess, maybe we saw that on the camera, I don't know, this one is also winning for black, but you need to calculate something in this position, <laughs> which annoys me a little bit. So I would go this c4 move. Yeah, b4 happened probably. Okay, can we have a look on the camera? Yeah, the girls are still fighting right now. It's amazing. I mean, one would expect this game to end pretty soon, but they are still fighting, and so we are. So we are. But, uh, you know, after b4, amazing. Uh, I would say that if black didn't want to play c4 in this position, after a3, which was a brilliant idea. Black didn't want to play this. It's winning, but it's understandable that uh, she wanted to avoid this. So that's why she played a4. So I guess that after b4, she will not play c4. But she surprised me and she played c4. <laughs> okay, she played c4 anyway. But I would expect a resignation here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, King G5. That's what we saw 15 minutes ago on the live camera. But after Rook D3 now. Where is the problem after Rook D3? Rook E5? Yeah, maybe Rook E5, you know.
Yeah, I can imagine this at the end of the road. Yeah, so that's exactly the position what we have seen on camera where Monika Sočko was not happy at all. And I can understand that because the position is winning, but you need to go rook d3. And after rook e5, it's already unpleasant a little bit because the b5 pawn is hanging. And if you take, I take. And I can imagine losing these two pawns, right? Somehow, so then it's going to be a draw. But I think, no, this is this must be winning. No, no way white is holding this one. But yeah, I mean, it requires some calculation. But rook d3 should be the correct move. Uh, in any case, black is thinking right now. What to do after king g5? And we see the live camera, the fire is still on. But they are reaching the second time treble because they have only 10 minutes now till the rest of the game and they will not get any any other 30 minutes, uh, only 30 seconds per each move. So they are approaching the second time treble and this may be one of the deciding moments of the whole championship because the position is winning for black. But imagine the situation where white would be able to hold this in game somehow. I don't know, it would be a miracle, but miracles do happen from time to time. It will be a huge blow for uh, for Monika Sochko. So she really needs to win this one, I think. And on the camera, somehow, no, she does not look happy at all. And we may see a sporting tragedy. On the other hand, young Azerbaijani player looks relatively confident. Okay, she knows she is lost, so she has. Uh, uh, all, all pressure went away because she knows that only only mistakes from her opponent can help her. So it's much easier to play than, than for black because black needs to win this one. Uh, so yeah, it can be psychologically tricky. And really, Monica does not look happy. It, I don't know, it may be. Uh, just uh, just a feeling because the position is currently winning for black so so we may not see any surprise but somehow I do feel that uh, she is losing a lot of time in a winning position and uh, yeah the game is still on and Monica does not look happy at all and if we go back to the position I do believe that rook d3 is like the only move to, to really win this uh, because what do you do? You can't go rook c5. Yeah, rook d3 happened on the board. Good job. So far, so good. Uh, I'm expecting rook e5. Yeah, rook e5 played instantly. And we see some complications. I would take the pawn, right? Immediately. I would take the pawn and then I would check what white is going to do. Computer is showing something like rook f3 in this position. Oh, and they already ended. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we don't know, but I guess I guess Monika Sochko won. Okay. And they are chatting a little bit about the game. I think, yeah, White is showing that oh, I had an advantage. Okay. And then I didn't know what to do. Yeah, she was very confident. But, but she lost, right? No, she didn't. It's unbelievable. What happened? Come on, guys. No way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
Unbelievable. What happened here? Okay, so we should uh, we should wait for the moves because we have 15 minutes delay. So we will know in 15 minutes at maximum. Uh, the, the girls are chatting about the game, but I'm very surprised about that. I mean, Rook takes G3 happened? Why? Oh my, this will cost terribly. Uh, Monica will not be happy about this. I mean, anything can happen in a chess game. And if, uh, if White is really going to save this one by playing A3, unbelievable. Really, this is just unbelievable. In a completely lost position, she was able to create this chance with b4. And black has many ways to victory now, but she chose this c4 move, which looks logical. But after rook d3, a very unexpected chance of rook e5 uh, happened. And black was supposed to take this pawn first, of course, because uh, uh, after rook takes b5, there is king takes e6. And I'm going to win this one, as I told you like 15 minutes ago. But for some reason, yeah, Monica took on g3 and that's the reason why she was not happy. So I was not mistaken. I had some feeling that something is going to happen, uh, but I <laughs> wanted to end this commentary, but I had some bad feeling about this one. And it really materialized my bad feeling because Black, uh, I mean, for some reason she she let white to activate the king to f5. The pawn is still alive. And when you take here, I take the pawn. And now you can't take on e6. And that's a big problem because then rook b7 is a threat. And now I can understand that this is a draw. In the game, rook f3 happened and then rook takes e3, but anyway, after rook takes b5, it's just a draw because the king is now very close to these pawns and they are not going to promote. And this is just a draw, right? So one small mistake and a huge defensive effort from Ulvia Fatalieva earned her a half a point. It changes the situation dramatically because yes, Monika Sochko is still in the lead chased by Gunai Mamadzada uh, on seven points, but uh, it's only half a point now, and it's a big difference. But okay, yeah, tomorrow Monika Sochko can win. Uh, I would recommend her not to analyze this game too much. I mean, uh, it was a golden chance, but on the other hand, the, the opening was very good for White, and she had a possibility to play uh, here after rook c8, she could play bishop f3, gaining a huge advantage. And it would be a difficult time for Monika Sochko. She didn't. She went into a verse in game, then she lost two pawns. But she fought bravely. And after a few inaccuracies from Monika Sochko, now we are waiting to move rook takes b5. And then what? Then h4, for example, trying to run with the pawns. Then I go king d5. And I'm just in time. It's amazing. Then if you go c3, then maybe black can be even worse uh, because I go here. And the pawn on e6 is also dangerous, so if you go king f6, let's say, trying to escape the checks. Uh, yeah, it can be it can be even dangerous for, for black. I go something like rook f1, and how do you stop this pawn, right? So you don't do that. But after rook takes b5, then, for example, if you take this uh, pawn on e6, uh, then uh, I, I, I go rook takes h5, and you're not going to promote these pawns because the king is pretty close to them. So probably you go something like rook d3, but I go rook c5. And it's just a draw, right? And we have rook takes b5 on the board. And we are just waiting till the 
until the rest uh, of the moves. But we may confirm the result from the chess results. Yeah, it was a draw. So yeah, it was a draw. Unbelievable story. Also unbelievable story on the second board. Very hard fighting games, I think. Monica was, after all, tired in the end game, and she missed a win, which is a bad news for Polish fans. But still, seven, seven and a half out of nine, it means she is leading the tournament. Even after such a miss, she is still leading the tournament, which shows how, how great tournament it is for Monika Sochko. But yeah, we have some bitter, bitter taste bitter aftertaste, let's say, after this in-game, because it was winning for play. And uh, it was spoiled here after rook e5. She took a wrong pawn. This pawn is not dangerous at all. So if I take rook takes a3, then if you take rook takes b5, I go king takes e6. Just uh, to explain, after king takes a5, the difference is that you didn't take on b5 yet. So I go like this. And then if you take, the position is now completely different because my rook is very well placed here and I go h4. And you see, all my pawns are running. With the rook on a3, it is different. And the position was a draw in the game. Now it's amazing, such a small difference and such, such a huge impact on the result of the game. Now this is going to be to be a draw. We have this position on the board, but after h4, I am expecting king d5 with a huge counterplay. You can't do that with the rook. Uh, with, you can't do that with the rook on g3, of course, that would be rook g5. Okay, in the game, rook h3 happened, but that's not a winning attempt anymore. I can go almost everything here, king e5 or king d5. And we know already that the game ended in a draw. So it's a wrap up for today. It was a very nice day and I like the commentary very much. I enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, thank you for comments and yeah, see you tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Bye.